All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to one of my favorite sessions of Ignite. Um, I'm gonna rename it, but first I'm going to tell all of you who we are if you have not met us yet. My name is Brooke Silva. I'm your regional technology trainer, which is the weirdest role because it does not accurately describe what I do for you guys in the region. And today I am joined by a few of our friends. I've got Teresa. Teresa, why don't you introduce yourself and then we will introduce Chris. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you again. My name is Teresa Kaywood, and I'm out of the Greater Portland uh, main area as the Market Sec Market Center Tech Trainer. So good I'll to see you all. Well. Thank you, thank you. And then Chris Orsini. So I'm nerding out. I mean, I do every day anyway, but I'm nerding out extra because, guys, today if you're on this, you're you're with greatness because we are joined by the president of labs advisors um and so many other things approved trainer he's just a powerhouse in this world when it comes to training but i'm gonna let him tell you who he is because he can give it more justice than i am because i simply just love the man to death so chris welcome to new england and thanks for joining us for night today Oh, thank you, Brooke. So yeah, my name is Chris Orsini. I was a market center tech trainer for two years. Uh, and then uh, for about 18 months, I was the director of technology and lead generation for Cody Gibson, United Home Group and UHD Worldwide. Um, since then, I've moved on to start my own business called Leverage Strong, where we provide virtual market center tech trainers to uh, market centers who couldn't otherwise have a market center tech trainer. Wonderful. And I'm a labs advisor and a Keller Williams University approved trainer. So, yes, and it takes a lot to become an approved trainer. So we've got one of the smart ones with us today in New England, <laughs> friends. So we'll see about that. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful. Chris and to I be have here. also been friends since yep. the beginning of time when I joined KW. I was lucky enough. Um, to be tapped on the shoulder to become a labs advisor very, very early in my KW career with you guys. So I've been on the KW labs advisor journey with Chris throughout our entire time here. So we're excited to do this. All right, so today's follow up with leads. I'm renaming this class to, oh my God, somebody clicked and gave me information. What do I do? That's what we're renaming this to because that's usually the phone call we get or productivity coaches get with it's oh my god now what somebody actually clicked i can't believe this worked so today what we're going to be looking at is basically what does it look like to go through this process right what does it look like to deal with leads to follow up with leads and capture them so that you don't lose them um Show of hands, digital hands, or put it in the chat. How many of you heard the term speed to lead? You can put it in the chat or raise your paws. Who wants to describe what speed to lead is for me? Come off of mute real quick, one of you. Shake your coffee cup at you. Anybody? So what is Speed to lead is, um, I don't know the exact definition, but when you get a lead, the faster you follow up, the more likely it is that you're going to have success converting. If you wait too long, they've, they've moved on. They have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming off of me and chatting with me. So you're right. It's speed to lead is not only how fast you get to it, but it's the systems and models behind it. So you're you're being preventative instead of reactive when somebody comes into your world through all these different sources that we're going to talk about. And everybody's so aggressive when they get into this world and they're like, I want leads, I want leads, I want leads. And I'm always like, well, that's cute. What are you gonna do with it? Mm -hmm. Not only that, not, what are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna do with it if it comes at one in the morning? or two in the morning, because does anybody have anybody else's relatives that like to scoop Zillow and put your name in? No, only me? Okay, carry on. Um, so in our last one, we discussed two-way conversation and getting everybody there, but today is actually gonna focus a lot on conversion and those ways of getting people into our world just a little differently. Um, any questions or ahas from your lead follow-up before we get into any of this content, 
Were there any big aha moments from our last? I know that was Friday, right? I know that was a long time ago. Or Chris or Teresa, if you have anything you want to add before we dive in. Well, I'm curious, is anyone here either on a team or like in a program in the market center that provides you leads? Anyone raise a hand, anything? No? Okay. No, well, that's awesome. New. Oh, oh okay. there we go. There we go. Okay. So as someone who's been on a team, right, that provides leads, um, been in programs that provides leads, that's probably, I, I've seen that that's one of like the biggest value propositions to an agent. Like that's what a lot of agents are looking for, or they, they, they want from their team. Um, I'm going to tell you now that is probably the lowest tier value proposition that you can get from your team. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a buddy who he works in a different company. Um, they like balloons or something. Um, and <laughs> he is on a team that they give him leads and that's it. They give him absolutely nothing else, no training, Aww. no coaching or anything. Um, he's been, uh, been an agent for a year and a half and still drives Uber. Um, and I'm like, dude, you're on a team and you're still driving Uber. There's something wrong here. Big time. So I actually coach him more than his own team leader does. So all that aside, be grateful that you're in this this realm and you're getting this this level of training um, that some of my good friends are choosing not to get, and know that the the what's most important is not the leads, it's what you're doing with them, and how you're being supported in your lead follow up. Right, because outside of just lead getting. Like, you know, we're scooping out these big nets. It's it's about lead conversion. And real estate is not a fast game. It is and it isn't. It isn't when it comes to closings. It, it The process isn't overnight. You're not like, mm, I like that house. I'd like to try it on and you bring it to the register, right? There's a process involved when you're purchasing a home. The, the fortune is always going to be in the follow-up. And what you're going to learn through this is it may not be instant. Just because somebody clicks a link and puts their info in or provides info doesn't mean it's a now. And how you nurture those people and how you bring value and stay in touch with them is what could be the difference between you closing them six months from now or a year from now or even three months from now. It's just a little different. Mm -hmm. And to give After fair lead, expectations, um, Gary Keller at FR, Family Reunion, said um, statistically the average consumer sits in a database for 18 months before transacting. Well, why? Let's open up to our friends. Why do you think that happens? Put it in the chat. Why do you think somebody sits in database purgatory? We are begging for leads in this world. Yet we won't do the one thing we need to do. Lack of follow up and follow through. Thank you, Melissa. Is it you don't know what to say? How many of you raise your hand if you sometimes feel salesy or aggressive? Do you feel salesy? Lindsay, man, you almost knocked your camera off. You went up so fast on that one. <laughs> <laughs> right? So one of the things we talk about so often is the, it's value. That's why these people are telling you they, they may want to buy something. And we're like, Ooh, I don't think I'm going to reach back out. Ah, uh, no, I don't want to bug them. They'll come to me. We, <laughs> we laugh, but we do do these things, right? I'm not calling you out, Lindsay, but we're talk talking about these things and you're giggling like crazy. So we know. Mm -hmm. So let's jump into our agenda. If you guys can see my screen, give me just a sec. I've got to move them all around. That was a that was a good move, Brooke. You and I could probably rant about this for the next two and a half hours. So, oh, and it's so true. Material. And guys, while we're sharing, <laughs> the um, the screens look a little weird on my fourteen million monitors. So if you do have a question, throw it in the chat. Um, and Teresa is going to be watching the chat with us today and helping answer any questions. But if you raise your digital hand, it forces you to the top of the screen, and we can see you. All right, does everybody see my, give me a little head shake and nod if you can see today's agenda. Rock on, rock on. So today we're going to talk about lead conversion, how to convert the lead to an appointment, because yes, appointments 
lead to closings, improve your conversion rate. And then we're gonna, we're actually gonna not just do ahas today, but Chris and I, you've got two of your tech people on, and Teresa third, we're really gonna dive into the contact. And Chris is gonna walk me through as if I were a new agent, putting one of the healthiest contacts in imaginable. So we'll get to that at the end and then we're going to let you guys fly free to do your su success tracker on your own and report those numbers back to your accountability partners sound like a plan mm -hmm. i like a good plan so let's talk about lead conversion there's a model there's an absolute model and we're we're a smaller group today so usually we break out into breakout rooms for this but chris Teresa, you think we should use this room as just one big old um breakout room for everyone so we can all hear yeah absolutely as Excellent. long as uh it encourages participation yeah and sure. if you're just joining us Teresa will put the um links back in but if you could turn on your cameras we'd love to see your faces thank you so much mm -hmm. so when you think about lead conversion when you think about those words I want you to take a minute right now and in front of you grab a piece of paper and I want you to write down or even on the back of your book on 11.2 there's all these blank spaces under the um the four little icons what questions do you have about lead conversion so we're going to take about two minutes right now and I want you to write down or type it into your phone or whatever you do and write down questions or things you'd like to learn about when it comes to lead conversion And if this is your first time on a call with me, just so you know, my stomach is louder than I am. I know it's hard to believe. We did have a naming contest at one point. So if you hear grumbling, purring, screaming for more food, that is me. Uh, do not be alarmed. It's incredible. It is. It's. I love it when it happens on a national call. I really love it when it happened on Mega Camp while I was teaching. That was fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it's how you, you know I'm not a robot. A... Whenever you teach live, you just need to request a microphone for your stomach. Yeah, yeah. Have a lapel I mean, mic a... down here, right? Oh, it's something. It's something, friends. All right, everybody have at least one or two questions. I see M still scribbling like a crazy person. There you go. Who wants to be brave enough to come off of mute and ask their question? And then, guys, throw those questions in the chat as well, because did you know you can hit those three meatballs in the chat? and download this transcript after. Did you know that? Yes, those are meatballs. Or, or yep, I call them, whatever. I'm, I'm food motivated. They're meatballs. meatballs and lines are hamburgers. Menu. Come on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, who wants to come off of mute and ask their lead conversion question? All right, um, I have one. Go ahead. So, um, it's kind of just on my past, um, experiences when I would, you know, get a lead and I'm just trying to follow up with them and, you know, they're interested in buying. And I, sometimes I have questions and just how to go about that process of, you know, what questions should I ask them, you know, as far as being pre-approval ready before I actually transfer them or get them on the phone with the, the, um, the loan lender, because I will talk to them and I'll say one, or they'll tell me one thing, but then when I go ahead and I connect them to the loan agent, it seems like they are nowhere close to where you know at least how they portrayed it to me it's not really how it seems so, like, what's a, so like, I, guess, I guess my question is what's a good way to kind of or what questions should I ask first before you know just going ahead and you know following up with the loan agent you know kind of like seeing if they could be pre-qualified before going to do that so you're looking for how to have the conversation about approvals, credit, where they are in the buying process and how they spoke to a loan officer. I love that. I love that. I, Cause that's a hard thing to talk about, right? We're not the loan officers, but we have to know a little bit about it. Thank you for sharing that. Bruce put in the chat, if you don't get an immediate response when you reach out to a lead, how frequently should you try again and for how long? Who's been here long enough to remember 10 days of pain? I'm just gonna leave with that, right? Like who remembers 10 days of pain? That's how long. <laughs> 
but we'll go into that more. What else do we have for questions on lead conversion? We call it 10 days of love now. I, I teach a whole class around a 12 day plan. So I take the 10 yes. days of pain and add two days to it. So. Oh, of love with love. Okay. With love. With love. <laughs> and what else we got for questions? I have a question. Um, so my problem is whenever I get a lead on the phone and I have a great conversation with them and they're interested and I've had issues where I do like, um, that other guy said I, I connect them with the loan officer and then they don't get back to the loan officer and then I try reaching out to them and I can't get them on the phone again or and I have this great conversation with them and then I try to follow up and I can't get them back on the phone again <laughs> um so I don't know if I don't know what my question is how do I replace the leads when after that first initial conversation to I guess, I don't know, maybe I'm answering my own question to show value at the beginning so they don't fly away. I love that. No, and, and it happens to all of us, right? We, I, I think too, it's intimidating. Buying a home is one of the biggest things you're gonna do in your world. And people get scared and how do we keep them motivated and how do we keep value? All right, one more before we go on. Who else has got, what, what's your lead conversion question? Won't be a long class, friends. Come on. Is there on. a best way to um, like nail that appointment during that first initial phone call that you know is going so well? Why not draw them in? Or how, what's the best way to draw them in for an appointment? Love that. Love that. So all of your questions and more are going to be answered on that topic today. So make sure you have those written down in any other questions. And guys, if we don't get to those, if those don't get answered during this chapter, let's pull them right into the Ignite group and continue the conversation there because we have a wealth of agents there who would love to talk about this topic and give you some of the things they've learned across the way. Because lead conversion is such an integral part of the lead process. If we're not converting, we're not getting appointments, we're not getting closings. And just like Chris's friend who's getting all these leads, he's not converting and he's not closing because nobody on his team is showing him how to or coaching him through that process. Mm -hmm. um, people often assume too that lead gen and lead conversion are the same things. And let me tell you guys that the path between lead gen and lead conversion can be a short road, a back road, or it could be highways between states to get to the people to get them to close. Lead gen is when you turn activities like prospecting, marketing into leads. Then the magic happens when you convert those leads and you get the appointments and you get them under contract and then you get a transaction. Sound cool today that we're gonna do that? I like it. Oops. All right, who wants to read this quote? The effort you give to converting leads must match the effort you give to generating them. So I love this. Like this is this is plastered on my wall. <laughs> like in different places. I don't have a lot of quotes up. This one is up there. It's because why are you gonna spend the money to get it? or put the sweat equity or effort in if you're not gonna do anything with it. This whole business are people fighting for leads. It's also why I'm not a fan of purchasing leads because what you're actually purchasing is the chance to get the lead. You're getting the chance to have speed to lead, the chance to get into relationship with them. And, it, and it's funny because they, they will try to sell you these lead aggregates of you are the first. You are the only one who owned the zip code. Chris, that is snake oil. That is like the biggest, like, oh, you're it the is. only one in Manchester, New Hampshire. Yeah. Oh, the Maybe only from one. that lead gen source, but what about all the other lead gen sources? Yeah, no, it's, and, and here's the thing, despite that, right, everyone knows a realtor. Right. I, I yeah. walk out my door and I bump into three of them. Like it's just they're everywhere. 
just because you have them in your database doesn't mean they're they're stuck to you or committed to you in any way, shape, or form. They didn't sign anything as a lead saying that you're going to be their their realtor. Um, and it's funny because I, you know, I who was into Pokemon cards as a kid? Did you ever have that that like kid in school who like had a ton of really nice Pokemon cards but didn't know how to play the game? Oh. That was my life. I was like, can you just play the game? Like, what do you right? mean you don't know what your fire type like, what, goes what's against? The, Come on. You know, what's the point of collecting all of these things in order for them to sit and not bring you any money? Um, yeah. It's true. It's true. Like, what's the point of a database if you're not going to work it? Like, don't pull yeah. these people in and not work them. Yeah. All right, Chris. Take it away, my friend. All right, so we're now on the lead conversion process page. So converting a lead to an appointment is a process that can happen quickly, although in some cases, I would say many, it can happen slowly. Now, Shift, the book Shift, uh, great book, great time to whip it out if you haven't read through it. Uh, Shift tells us that consistently getting every possible appointment from the lead you generate isn't complicated, but it does require preparation, practice, and purposeful action. Uh, time on task over time, right? Consistency. A um, little off script, but one of, one of my favorite quotes from Gary is, uh, and I'm going to butcher it, but the um, the people who are successful are those who've come to terms with the monotony of success, right? There's nothing sexy about consistency. That was boring, but it's, you put the work in, you get the results, and then it's, you get the exactly. sexy things at home later, like the vehicle you've always wanted, the home you've was, always wanted. I was scared of the examples, Brooke, <laughs> when you said at home. <laughs> um, Listen, some of these are newbies. They don't know me well yet. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay. This starts at the top of the model with capture. You must capture correct information and enough information to be able to contact the person. Um, you'll find that if you're running internet lead gen, uh, you're going to get a lot of your mom at AOL.com or <laughs> Not you know, 555-555-6969. Like, you're going to get a lot of BS data. And that, to the, the, those who have not done internet lead gen before, um, it, it's very discouraging. But I'm going to tell you ahead of time, if you are doing internet lead gen, it's normal. Don't be discouraged by it. Just trash those leads. Don't waste your time on anything that's obviously false data. Um, there we go. Uh, so then you move to connecting building a connection, gaining information, and building trust. Finally, it ends in closing for an appointment. Without the appointment, the conversion hasn't happened, and you just had a chit-chat with someone. Um, now, I will say that it's, you know, we, we push sphere-based databases or sphere-based businesses or what we, you know, what Shift calls, you know, prospecting-based marketing enhanced because, the objection here is building that connection, gaining information, and building trust. Are you are you going to give your information, your trust, and your connection to someone you already know more quickly than someone you just found on the internet? Yeah, it's going to be mean, way. How easier. many of us have emails that we use for just signing up for things? <laughs> yeah. Right, like. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. People who already know, like, and trust you are going to be quicker to give you information, have conversations, and connect with you um, and trust you. So when the conversion step does not result in appointment, what do you suppose happens next? Put your answers in the chat, raise your hand, or just unmute. Love to hear, like, two answers on this. What do you think happens so, yeah. next? So the appointment didn't happen. Now what? Mm -hmm. You read the script. Reach out to them, keep calling them. I right, continue following up. Continue following up, yeah. Okay. Trash the leads and move on. Ooh. <laughs> Sometimes. 
Depends. Well, if they tell you to unsubscribe, then absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I will say there are very, very, very few cases where I would justify trashing a lead. Um, one would be bogus information. Mm -hmm. right, your mom at AOL.com, you know, um, the other would be that they have explicitly unsubscribed from everything and told you to stop calling them. Those are the only two cases I would ever trash a lead. Because statistically, everyone moves within what, seven to 10 years, it changes every year, but yeah, it's usually it's around seven years, right? And even if we're being pessimistic, we every 10 years, Right. And you can look at your database and say, if I have 800 people sitting in here, 80 of those people statistically are going to move this year. Right. This, every person in your database is eventually going to move statistically. So there's no point in trashing them. Um, cool. So, um, some, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say some folks in the chat had said that we need to put them on a touch plan and stay consistent and follow up and put them on a drip campaign. Yeah, exactly. Now, Did someone take this class plan. already? Yeah. So <laughs> smart plans, right? So smart plans. We, we mm -hmm. joke about it in New England, how they, they're they meant to make us smarter. How many of you came from a different brokerage or a sales world before coming here? Any of you? Okay. Drip campaigns are called that water torture. They're torture for a reason, but you remember your torturer. You will never forget their name. A lot of the reason we don't put people on smart plans, which are to make you smarter and never forget something important and to keep the promises you made to your clients. I over communicate. I'm always on top of things. You'll get all these emails from me. And then all of a sudden, somebody else's blue and yellow sign is in the yard because we didn't do what we promised. So smart plans will set your little lead generation soul on fire and help you remember all these important things and consistency. Fear of over touching is a mindset issue alone. Get over it because we can't cry about the sign in the yard next door when we didn't know or we didn't do the things we said we were gonna do, especially when they're your neighbors. We we fear talking to the people we know most. Well, they see my signs. They see my car that's all wrapped. They see me and my my realtor get up every day. They know I'm a realtor. But have we have actually said to them, I would love to be your realtor of choice at some point. So yes, consistency in those smart plans, drip campaigns, Chris, do you know how often people forget about you when you're in business with them and there's not a friendship involved? I, I do actually. And I love throwing this an this question out and hearing people's answers to that. How often do you guys think people forget about you in this world? You can put in the chat, how many days, yeah. how many months, years? What do you think? This blew my mind at mega camp when they said this because it reminded me i hadn't heard in a long time mm. 11 days eight days and you guys are gracious like i'm used to people answering like five minutes an hour <laughs> 20 <laughs> minutes, minutes there we go benjamin yeah, we, yeah, yeah. like we're Maybe not goldfish like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> goldfish in 10 seconds <laughs> <laughs> they are we had them yeah. So we already had the right answer in the chat. Yep, Dory. Exactly. There are Dory. Yeah. So there, it's 11 days. So is it? If you also so think, yeah, it's 11 days. The last days I had now, heard, yeah. It. So I, I hadn't seen the recent studies. When I had studied this, it was 21 days. So nope, it's getting 11. shorter, guys. So we're on our way to like the 30 seconds, right? We're on our but way to the Do you know fish. why? Do you guys know why? It's because, and we've heard about this in other chapters and in Shift is, Social media messages are never ending. I woke up to 82 mm. notifications between my text messages and Facebook this morning. And how much of that in my world, and especially when you're looking for something, becomes around real estate. We are constantly fed information. It's such a, we are just those big whales that are absorbing things as we're floating through the water. So much information is being thrown at our consumers and they get confused. It, is this the person we use? I just got a card for a home anniversary from a realtor. Was this our realtor? 
if we're not staying on top of those things, every 11 days, people are going to forget about this. So when we say 36 touch and people go oh, 36 touches, it's not all at once, friends. It's spread out to be consistent so that you always stay top of mind with yeah. your um, clients. But sorry, okay, Chris, can I, I, can totally I hit on that limiting belief for just a second now? Because yeah, yeah. I hear that a lot. Like, oh, I'm scared of turning people off or getting people annoyed or getting tired of people. Guys, how many... How many of you get emails from Target? Like and text how messages and freaking pop up often do you get emails from Target? Like every day, practically, right? Are any of you pissed off at Target? No. Have any of you stopped shopping at Target? No, it's because an of those emails. Yeah. Right. And for like I get them. I haven't bothered them subscribing. I don't open them. I've never been prompted to go buy a rug because I got a Target email. Like it does me no good one way or the other, but they've captured my mind share, right? If I think, hey, I need to buy a rug, I think Target. I don't think Home Depot. I don't think Lowe's. I don't think whatever the other places are. I think Target, right? Um, and that's the point here is when you are doing a 36 touch, it's about mind share and it's about continued communication so that you are not forgotten about and they're not going to get pissed off at you. They nope. aren't. I mean, there may be that one grumpy old person that you don't even want to work with to begin with, right? And you just saved yourself. But your your job is to give information. Your job, if you're coming from contribution and not just, hey, you want to buy? You want to buy? You want to buy? Like if I you're sell continually invest. coming- Buy, sell, invest? Yeah. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you're continually giving value- then there is no reason that anyone's going to be upset at you. Um, all right, continuing on. We're we're probably going to rabbit trail a number of times in this. So that's okay. We do. Yeah, this is that's where the value comes in. Um, all right, so after lead generation, lead conversion is the most business critical activity you must master. So number one is getting the leads, right? If we don't have leads to begin with, what are we? You know, we have no business. Second is now, what do we do with the leads, right? Now, if we have a database, no matter the number of people in that database, if we don't know how to work that database, it is useless, right? Um, it is where the possible business that comes from lead generating activities can turn into probable business and ultimately into profitable business. Converting the lead to an appointment has so much importance because it is how you have a chance at earning income. Converting appointments to business is also a key to economic su success. You'll learn more about converting the appointment to business starting on day 14 of Ignite. Until then, we will focus on the how now that you know the why. Now, a little exercise I'm going to... Actually, you know what? Before that... Did you guys have any ahas from this? I want to hear like two or three ahas from this section. And then I, I'm going to share something. Once I get two or three ahas, I'm going to share a little nugget of something that I've picked up from. Well, I'm, I'm going to throw one out there. And it's always that this is one of those chapters. The This part of Ignite is something you should continually do all the time. Because if you don't know, you've got some agents in this room that have been doing this a very long time. We need this refresh because we all get into our own way when it comes. I do. I just had a big reset at the end of August with a coach and my business went through the roof after that. But my big aha is that we're all always going to hit these times where we need to go back to this education to remind us that we have to do these things. This is foundational. This one. Mm hmm. One or two more ahas. Uh, I would say I still use, just like you had said, certain vendors, whether it's online or in, in physical stores, despite the annoying emails. I don't get angry at them. Right. We don't sit at the dinner table and be like, "Could do you have the gall of Target telling me about a sale? <laughs> Boycott them. Yeah. Cancel them. <laughs> Cancel culture target. Yeah, right. So I I love 
this is what stood out to me in this. So I, I love we we have these three. Could you jump back to the, the previous slide? Um, so we've got these three spheres. Now, once you master this, you then graduate to the ability to then refine this, right? And there's various models that I've heard used, one being like the watch nurture hot model, right? Dividing your database now into wa uh, watches, people that are going to buy in a year or later, nurtures six, six months to a year, and hots. Zero, you know, now to three month business, right? And once we get this basic part refined, we can now boil our database down to the people who are going to give us business over the next year. And we can have, we can move from possible business to probable business to profitable business to predictable business. I love that predictable. I don't like living in a reactive state. I'm a parent, so I do it anyway um, with all the children in my house, but I love predictable and probable. And I like to be able to control my business with yep. those outcomes. Because if you follow the models, I mean, the red book hasn't been rewritten in so long because the red book still works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so some, uh -huh. what, what I oh, do we? Yeah. So I we've got an aha that says so. never be timid to stay in contact because it does not take long for others to forget about you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't. And then Bruce wrote variety of messages. It's important because People will quickly learn to ignore you if you say the same things over and over. Oh, oh my mean, gosh. You mean you don't want to see another just listed email from someone? Here's my other thing too, guys. This is a soapbox moment. You're going to hear it from me a lot. Stop copying, pasting the board of realtors, emails and names and, and send out emails to them. What a waste of email. If every email was a dollar in your world, would you spend it marketing to other realtors or people who are actually going to close the homes for you? Right. That's, that's my big soap. Do not spend your money emailing other board of realtors. That's not a value touch, right? I get spammed by other realtors constantly. I don't even sell the homes. Like, come on guys. Don't, don't waste your, it's yep. the value touch and the consistency. So a little riff off that there's a book called upstream and I recommend anybody read it. Um, especially in this industry. Um, there's a point in it uh, that they get to called uh, alert fatigue, right? Where we see the same alert so many times and totally forget about it. Like how many of you, you know, the fire alarm went off in school, right? In elementary school and you thought, oh crap, the school's burning down. It's the end of the world. I hope everyone's safe. No, you heard the fire alarm got off, go off and you're like, oh, it's a fire drill. I get out of math. Awesome. Right. That's alert fatigue where you hear an alert so many times that you become numb to it. Same thing like the reminders on my phone doesn't work anymore because I've ignored it so many times that I just subconsciously ignore it. It's as if it's invisible, even though the notification is right there front and center. Don't make yourself invisible. Don't fatigue uh, your consumer. Right. Have a variety of communication. I love that, Bruce. I wish I was in person to give you a high five. <laughs> I'll give it to him the next time I see him. Thank you. For you. Thank you. All right. So moving on. Let's see. Sorry. In there we go. Are we on the right? Yes, we're in the right. Place. Yeah, we are. Um, so we're going to get into some specific steps of the lead conversion model. Um, so now turn to, we're on, what page are we on? I, I'm so bad with page I think numbers. in your workbook, you were I on think it's 10. 11. Yeah. My printer cut oh, off six, all the pages. Apparently numbers. 16, according to the slides. If I just look at the slides. Okay. At its simplest, capturing um, is collecting the minimum amount of valid contact information for a potential buyer or seller. This should include their names and a good way to get a hold of them, such as email and a phone number. Most likely, this will occur when you are lead generating. Um, so, what are some methods of capturing? Let me get two or three answers in the chat or unmute, whatever you want. How can you get a couple methods for capturing leads and their information? Actually, guys, while you're doing that, 
If you would like my Cyber Ninja news to stay safe, why don't you go ahead and put your name and email in the chat and I will um, grab the transcript after. So Jason, you said uh, our app. I, I love that answer, yet how with your app? And actually, I think I heard so, someone unmuting. Oh, that's me, Chris. That's okay, go for it. I actually pull the app out right there and just plug in their information. I do that at networking events. Pull, I, I open the app, pull the app. I, re I realize I haven't been asking them to download the app. That's the thing I've been doing wrong. But I do pull it out and it's immediate and, I, and it's gone. Okay, so with the, with the command app. Love it. You stole one of my ideas, actually. So sorry, Chris. <laughs> you guys know if you put things into the command app, and once their contact is there, you hit those three meatballs. You can send them a text that asks them to download your app, and then magic happens because it says, "Do you want to log this interaction?" And you're like, "Oh my god, yes, I do." Because if you don't log it, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So All funny. Right, so hold on, let me look at the chat. I am because you know what's funny, Chris is. I offered a piece of value and all these suckers put their information in for me. And now I own you because mm. I also have a video recording saying you're giving me permission to email you a piece of value. Oh, thanks, Chris. Thanks. Yes. Yep. Oh, David, thanks. <laughs> but true, right? Something as simple as do you want something? I'm not giving you something until you give me something, mm -hmm. right? That was such a simple way to capture. And you all did it. Look at I've got emails from everyone in here and I will yep. give you those cyber ninja news. It's not a bait and switch by any means. But that was a piece of value well, for you guys. And I love because now they they know what you pulled on them and they're still giving you the your their email. <laughs> they're still coming in. It's so good. It's like, hey, you got played, sucker. And then you're they're still, oh no, keep playing yeah. me. So keep no. Playing. <laughs> Because it's valuable because they know it's, I'm not going to try to sell them. They're, they've got items exactly. of value from me. Yep. So uh, one of the one of the one of my favorite, I, I miss the original Ignite where we had we would start off with affirmations. Um, and I loved teaching the database after the database um, uh, Ignite. I think it was session four of the original Ignite. And the affirmation was always the, for that one was. I always come from contribution. People will welcome my call. Right. And that's just a reminder of exactly what Brooke just did. She had no hesitation to present that and ask for your email because she knew that she was coming from contribution and she wanted to provide value to you. Her end goal was not strictly to just capture your information for the sake of capturing it. People will but welcome my call. Not just take my call, Brooke, but welcome oh, my call. Oh, welcome my call. Sorry. Yes. I'm going to put that in. That's a cute one in there. So, yes. um, so yeah, we, a lot of, you know, there were some great answers in the chat as well from, where was it? Uh, Melissa, open houses, social media, mm -hmm. landing page and website. Um, let's see. QR There's mailers and from those flyers. Things. What was that, Brooke? I said that when you do use the QR codes on mailers and flyers too, it's amazing how mm -hmm. people respond to things that they feel are passive, right? Yeah. Mine was aggressive. Mine was flat out saying, give me your info so I can give you something. Whereas sometimes mm -hmm. people need those passive inquiries to get things done. This is also one of the key levers to great marketing is getting permission permission mm -hmm. you this is why i also get so cranky when people just copy and paste emails from the board you can't do that you don't have permission to email them they've never said yes i would love to see your coming soon 40 times a week so that's how you end up in spam jail when mm -hmm. people start sending you to spam constantly because you didn't have permission we've got and that's why we love those things because when you fill out a form when you do a landing page when they click on an ad it's asking permission because you can't go forward in submitting your info without permission. So permission-based marketing is huge. And that's another piece of value because it always says, well, you signed up for my list. So here you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's probably a, a good opportunity to plug the TCPA. Yes. 
Telephone Consumer Protection Act, um, as well as the Can Spam Act. We don't talk about the Can Spam Act enough. Um, That's a big one, though. But it is a big one. The fine for the Can Spam Act, I looked it up recently, can be up to I think forty three thousand dollars. Start, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, so, did you have a question? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I've actually done that as, you know, like when I, sometimes I'm cold calling and um, I usually, you know, talk to them and say, oh yeah, well, I can send you information regarding a home if you're interested in selling it. What's your email address? I usually get it that way, but sometimes I find myself in a position where I'm like, oh, so what am I going to send them? <laughs> you know, um, and you don't have their address. <laughs> Well, no, as far as like an email. So I, I, you know, I try to do like a rough comp for them to send them to see like how much their house is um, worth. But I'm like, well, it's then I kind of, I feel like I, I, I step on my own foot because it's kind of like, I'm not going to that appointment and closing it. Cause I should be setting an appointment to meet up with them and do like a rough estimate and walk around their home and stuff like that. And I'm just like, oh, well, well, how about you just give me your email just because I'm looking for that contact. So I could give you like a rough estimate. And then I do like a, like, a, you know, like a dirty comp or whatever and send them that just <laughs> because just, because, you know, obviously I'm not going to be able to give them a, you know, a, right. a good quality estimate of how much it is, but because I'm looking for that email or that information that I'm like, well, give me your email so I could send you something. So I guess my question is, is there, what other value I can send them through email if I am, I'm trying to, you know, basically do what you just did. Like, oh guys, I have this, you know, these nuggets I'm going to try to send you. So give me your email, you know? And that's usually what I try to do, but I'm like, yeah, I can send you a comp, uh, but it's going to be rough by the way. But I feel like I'm stepping on my toe because I shouldn't be doing that. I should be going to, to meet them and, you know, setting up a listing appointment, for example. So, so Brooke put two, two good answers in the chat um, is the neighborhood nurture is neighborhood nurtures a great catch all. Like the, mm -hmm. even if, if I just bought a house yesterday, I would still want to get your neighborhood nurture. So I know what's going on in my neighborhood, right? It's, I, I can't think of a single person it does not apply to, um, and then promote my app as well. Now, what I would do now, it, it sounds like you're talking about listings specifically, um, or sellers, um, you could, I would go for the appointment. And since you do want to capture their email, you, you can ask, can I send you a calendar invite via email so that you have our appointment on your calendar? Right. And so you go for the appointment, you get their email to send them the calendar invite. And that may be on the techier side. Cause that's me. Like if I have a meeting with someone, you better send me a calendar invite or it's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> right. Um, well, sometimes yeah, they're, just, they're just very like hesitant for the appointment because they're like, well, I, you know, I'm not trying to move forward quickly, like right away. Um, and so when they, when they cut me off there, I'm like, oh, well, I can just, you know, like, just like I said, trying to get that email because they don't want to meet with me and they're not ready to, to move forward. I still want to, you know, capture their information. That's when I go and I'm like, oh, well, I can send you an email for so I don't know what uh, what other value I can say. Oh well, okay, we don't have to meet today. Let me send you let me send you an email about whatever, and then you know I'll touch base with you next week and see if we could follow up and kind of schedule a listing appointment or something like that. And it could be also how you're setting up the beginning of the call, right? Are they calling you? Or are you calling them? Are you asking how did you hear about me? Are you asking what's prompting you to move? Right? Are you digging into mm -hmm. questions that are important to them? before jumping into let me in your house well, you know like i want to come in i want to look at everything. usually the conversation goes like hey listen i have some interesting buyers who are interested in buying your house are you are you considering selling and that's usually how the conversation starts because it's usually cold calling and then they'll go on about oh yeah sure you know um you know there's something i'm thinking about no i'm not interested in selling or yeah well where who are the buyers and you know then i we start talking about like what they want and then you know, some of them are like, well, you know, I don't know how much the, the house is worth for. And, you know, this one, I'm like, well, I can come by and see if I could give you an estimate of like what the home's worth. And then they, they're usually like, yeah, I'm not ready for that now. And that's when I'm like, I'm stuck because I'm like, okay, well, let me email you or. Right. Let me get email. Yeah. And I say, you I know, stuff you like that is, it's great. And people may not realize how fast or slow this market moves. So one of the best ways for me to put the value on your home that it deserves is to come out 
and compare it to other properties in your area that have sold. It's gonna allow me to see what the home interior looks like. Have you made upgrades? But those are things we couldn't do. You wouldn't go to a dentist virtually to fix things, right? Yourself, while they walk you through it. Same thing with your home. We never wanna do that. So I have two appointments next week. I do have one in the evening and I have one in the morning. Which works best for you? And then you shut up. I over talk. <laughs> then you gotta let silence work for you. Because when they get uncomfortable, they're going to make some decisions as well. We do it to you guys all the time, whether you realize it or not. How many of you death stared your children too until they do something or they confess to the crime in the household? Mm. Had to pull that a lot this weekend with Miss Hope Robin. She's awful. Yeah. Shout out to anyone with a six-year-old or anything under 10 because I'm ready to pull my hair out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's one of those, it's, it's giving them information allowing them to understand that you're there for value and not to sell knives or vacuums or oils and to help them in the process. Mm -hmm. Michael, I see you off on mute. Oh, no, I just, I was laughing at you uh, talking about your six-year-old. Oh. <laughs> They're awful human beings and I'm over it. <laughs> and I'm over it. I'm over it. And then Whitley, I think one thing I would add um, to that is your number one object objective in that case uh, is always going to be finding their motivation. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. what would, and it's even in a cold calling situation where you're saying, Hey, I've got a buyer. Would you be interested in selling? What would selling this home do for you? What would tapping into the equity of your home do for you? Right. And then every time you call them, you can yeah. remind them, Hey, uh, you know, you can move close to your son in college or you can set up whatever, you know, any of the reasons they have, you can just remind them of that. And at the end of the day, you're that person helping them get one step closer to their goal, their big why, their dreams, their desires, right? Okay, um, so back to the content. Um, so we're on slide number 17. I'm going, there we go. Thank you. All right. When you are capturing, it's important to know what you're going to say before the conversation. In your participation guide are some conversation frameworks to ask for contact information. These come from, pay, uh, from shift page 93. Again, fantastic book to read right now. Um, if so, some of these quotes are, or these questions, if I were to need to contact you, what would that number be? If I found exactly what you are looking for, how would I contact you? If I found out that information you are wanting, how would I get it to you? I love this because, so my husband comes from a first responder world, fire medic, right? You're not going to get that man to pick up the phone, but you text him and he'll text you right back. He could be doing CPR and he'll text you right back. Like it's mm -hmm. fine, but get him to pick up the phone. <laughs> so this is also a great way. It's true, Chris, right? You know, him. this is a great way to validate how they like to be contacted as well, because not everybody wants a phone call. Not everybody can take a phone call, but everybody can usually respond to text and they're going to tell you and you're going to have people who flat out be like, do not text me. Text me to see if we can talk and then let's talk. Um, that's my dad. I text him and it's a question and he calls me and I'm like, I texted you for a reason. I cannot talk. But he doesn't get that because he wants to just talk on the phone. So I like this because it also helps validate if you're listening to those cues, how they want to be contacted. Mm -hmm. All right. For this step, uh, for this first step of capture, have a system in place. Capture all leads in your database and continue to cultivate the relationship using touch campaigns. Uh, all leads may not be ready for an appointment. So your goal uh, then is to gain mind share and continue to stay in close emotional proximity so that when they are ready, they think about you. So two, two words that I want you guys to just write down somewhere, put on a sticky note, kind of just have in your world on a regular basis. Can anyone guess what those two words, uh, well, actually it's three words, but two terms that we just said in that one sentence. Two words that I want you guys to take. If you took anything away from this, this hour and a, two and a half hours, it would be these two words. 
two terms. Brooke, it's not fair. You're an instructor. You need to let them answer the question. All right. Emotional proximity was one. There's another word in there. Term. Sorry, I keep saying words, but it's terms. Emotional proximity is two words, but that's a huge one. And there was one more. Um, David wants me to repeat the sentence. Um, yes. Yeah, so all leads may not be ready for an appointment. So your goal then is to gain mind share and can you continue to stay in emotional proximity. Thank you, Brooke, so that when they are ready, they think about you. There's one other word in there. Mind share. There we go. Thank you, David. Um, yeah. So mind share and emotional proximity. Um, those are the what's pretty much the what's of this entire conversation today. And we're just putting them into a how. Make sense? Um, so let's work on an activity. Are we gonna actually do that activity, Brooke? I do, because I and it looks like this in your page, guys. And I'm gonna try to see the page. I think it's 11.4 in the workbook. There's, It's like four boxes if it's color. Uh, it, uh, I got my blur on, so sometimes you don't see it. Yeah. Even if you don't have your workbook out, let's just take out a piece of paper because I want you guys to write down these things as we're going and think about them because it's building mm -hmm. a system. All right, so we got four questions that I want you guys to answer. And we'll give you a few minutes to answer them um, on a piece of paper, and then we'll just recap it afterwards. So I want you to ask yourself these four questions. One, how are you currently capturing leads? Two, what information are you collecting? Three, what are your current lead categories, otherwise known as tags, labels, groups, et cetera? Number four, what can you do to improve your current capture system? So again, we're going to answer these four questions. How are you currently capturing leads? What information are you collecting? What are your current lead gen categories or tags? And four, what can you do to improve your current capture system? Any questions on that? Does that make sense? All those questions? Any questions on the questions? Question. So let's just go to like 10.02. We'll answer till 10.05 and then we'll take a quick break. So you have until 10.02, scribble, scribble, scribble. We got a question. Um, oh, go ahead. I'm known for butchering names, so I'm not gonna even try. Um, um, I have a question regarding buyer lead. Um, if someone wants to, uh, don't want to con do a contract with you, he just wants you to help them uh, find a house. Uh, if they like, if I find some something that uh, that goes with your uh, with their expectations. I uh, should I share that information with them or not? And how can I help them? Because they don't want to do contract. Question for you, what state are you in? Uh, Connecticut. What does your uh, local rules and regulations say about working with someone without a buyer's agreement in place? Um, before walking in the house, you should do a contract. Like you cannot uh, go with them to see and to look for the house. So usually when we hear this conversation in our coaching classes, it's usually because the person on the other end of our table doesn't understand the value of working with a realtor. So I would take a step back 
and validate more questions with him and make sure they understand what you can and cannot do unrepresented. And it's always different by state. And that's always why I asked that question, Chris. New England is odd and every state is very different. There are some states that you can't even talk to them without showing them a piece of paper first that goes over what working with an agent does. Um, but yeah, let's that might be answered at the end of all this too, but it, usually it's take a step back, validate their fears, um, and then just tap into local resources in your market center to make sure you understand the buyer's laws too. Okay. Uh, what I well, did, I I told them to make up their mind if they're ready to buy a house, then I'm here for them to help them. That's what I did. I and provide value, just keep providing value and making sure they know you're there for them. But yeah, definitely check in with the market center on those laws first too. So you cover yourself at all times. Yeah. All right, so we've got a couple of minutes before our break. We all know we're trying to get as much information as we are, right? So I wanna skip one and two, but I wanna talk to you guys about your lead categories. Tell me what you're using for tags or want to use for tags and your lead categories. Put you can either come off mute or put them right in chat. I'm going to put my favorite one or two. Those are my favorite tags. Pickleball, that's a great one. Pickleball. I've never played pickleball. Oh, it's it's so much fun. It's amazing. Yeah. It's either, it's either, uh, I describe it as either mini tennis or mega ping pong. <laughs> I have so many tags now. Perfect. Beach. Let's talk about lead sources. Lead sources are going to be one of the most important things you can capture from day one as an agent, mm -hmm. get into this habit. You are spending money to get leads and you don't know your return on investment or the timing, you are wasting Ooh. money. But even your business card, your magnets, pens, anything that has your name on it is a lead source. Your mouth is a lead source, word of mouth. If you're in the bar talking about it and you have a conversation, that's a lead source. Mm -hmm. And it's so important. Here's my trick question. I shouldn't have said that, Never mind. If you go to an open house, you meet someone, surprisingly they're unrepresented what is the lead source what is what do you put in your data bank for a lead source don't you ask them like how did they know about the open house Girl, Boom. you're gonna get the biggest hug from me when we meet in person well, yes well, because nobody wakes up and goes yeah. I do believe I need to go to the open house at one, two, three main today. Like this stuff doesn't pop into our heads as realtors. It does because it's, it's overstimulating to us, but how did they hear about it? Was it a Facebook dad? Was it word of mouth? Was it another agent? Great. Thank you for giving me that information. Did you see it in a community dumpster? I mean, community Facebook group. Did you see it on a, uh, a page you're following? Dig a little deeper because that's how, you know, your stuff is working too. All right, one or two more lead sources in there or tags. I still tag them open house too, by the way, because if a property comes up in that neighborhood again and these people didn't win it, you know I'm hopping on the email and the phone and the text machine to let them know there's another property with an open house coming soon. Mm -hmm. OH, I go OH underscore and then the, the street name. Anywhere you frequent. The command app is where my phone used to be on my phone, the little phone icon. If I am having a conversation with you on a daily basis, it means I should be logging everything in my data bank. Anybody you converse with, where they're from, how you know them, tags are a way to quickly recall information as well. There's no such thing as too many tags. And when we see my command later, you're gonna understand why it's so important. Color code them. Theme them, do what you need to yep. do. But when you open your app and you can quickly see who this person is, where you met them, their dreams, all these things, it's gonna be quick, quick conversations. All right, let's take a quick break. Let's go to- Can I just say, before we take a quick break, I love David yes. White's lead gen strategy, spending at least three days 
or three hours a day at different bars to Legion. That's fantastic. Your wife is not impressed with you right now. Um, but that's, I'm going to say that's a life that by design. Guarantee that is a life by you <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth. And I've had the pleasure of meeting both of them in person. And this is not, um, I'm not, I'm not surprised at all by this conversation. So <laughs> let's take a break. 10, 16, 10, 17 now. Um, no more bars today though, David, until this is done and we'll see you back. So mute yourself and we'll see you in a couple minutes.
All right, gang, one more minute to get settled in. Grab the next cup of coffee. I'm on coffee number, I don't know, like four or five. I'm going to smoothie. It's, um, it's bad when I work from my home office because it means unlimited curing that is so close instead of me having to walk around the office to get one. Oh, it's wonderful. I've also got this new thing where I've had to add reading glasses to my repertoire, even though I wear contacts because I can't wear bifocals because they make me fall down. Um, and I've lost every pair that I bought for the last two weeks. Like, how do people with reading glasses do this? Like, I need to One day you're just going to find them all. You're going to. Of course. I just ordered an eight pack with cases. You know what's going to happen. As soon as they roll into the house or to the office, every pair of reading glasses is going to make itself visible to me. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. We are back, friends. Turn your cameras back on. We're excited to be with you. Ignite yep. is probably my most favorite thing to teach. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. All right. So. It is that time to continue moving on uh, again. Yeah. Turn your cameras on if you're with us. Um, and if you're not with us, get with us. Um, so we're now on slide. No, you're, I think you're a slide ahead there. Oops, sorry. Let's go. As you should there be. We go. There we go. Yes. Uh. So we, oh. <laughs> I love you, Brooke. All right. So I the like second you. step is connect. Connecting is about laying the foundation for a working relationship. What is important during this step is to listen, ask good questions, offer solutions, and keep the focus of the conversation on them. I think this is one of the, the hardest and yet most important things for us to grasp is asking questions. It's so and hard. We have so much is. to tell them. We want to share so much. Mm -hmm. We're like real estate velociraptors. Right? We just want to give and, them everything. And we want we want to establish ourselves, right? We want to be, you know, I am the trusted right. source. I am the smartest one out, out there. Here's all of the things <laughs> I know, right? Especially as a tech guy, it's so easy to be like, oh, well, I know how to do this, that, and the other. And like, <laughs> right? Right? Like, just but, click a button. You'll be fine. Guys, the, the questions you ask are going to give you valuable information. They're going to give you valuable ammunition um, for attacking this lead. That is terrible wording, but you get no, but it's the, true because this the is the point. This is a game. This is mm -hmm. like they say real estate is a contact sport. It is. Mm -hmm. David, what so, do you want to know more about? Are you being yeah. facetious with us or do you want to know more about attacking me? Oh, I think he's he's Early. just practicing. Tell us more oh. about this. Yeah, very, very well done. Well done. You tripped me up. Yeah, very. Yeah. Well done, sir. If you don't know Smoke what to fun. ask, yeah, that's David, that's an incredible example, though. I'm so glad you, you did that. But um, that's if you don't know what to ask, just ask that. Could you tell me more about that? I have such and, a great story for after. Um, were any of you in the 36 touch class on Friday with the Peters from South from the Southeast region? What a fantastic class. They gave me a story that I was like, Ooh, I cannot wait to tell my igniters on Monday about this, but it's true. We, we've got to have those conversations and questions that lead to getting the info we want. Cause I think also that's why we don't ask for the appointments as Personally, we probably don't feel like we brought enough value to the conversation or in a place in the relationship where we should be asking for the appointment and closing that appointment. Mm -hmm. you think that's true, Chris? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, a good friend of mine I uh, was talking to just the other day, he was complaining about how, you know, he's he's lead generating. He's making these phone calls. He gives his value proposition. They say they're not interested and they hang up. And I'm like, well, how do you know the value proposition you're giving them is the value that they're looking for. Cause you haven't asked, you don't know what they want. <laughs> you don't know what they need. You don't know what they find value in. Sure. It may seem valuable to you to present this value proposition, but how do you know it's the least bit applicable to what they want and need? Then yeah, we don't know. We don't know until we ask these questions. Yep. So the goal of the communication, in addition to building the relationship, is to deter determine their urgency. 
give enough information to know how to prioritize this lead and help you know what touch campaign you can use as a follow-up plan. And they're already there. They're already written. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything. Yep. Oops, so as you go back into the room, there we go. Sorry. Okay. As you communicate and connect, keep these best practices in mind. One, embed your value proposition into the conversation to position yourself as a local expert. Number two is build and have confidence through knowing what you are going to say. Role play, practice conversations, and know the market data. Three, use backward design when thinking about your communication. Think about the intended outcome before starting the conversation. Use questions to help lead them towards the appointment. Now, if it was up to me, I would have flipped these and I number three would be my number one. Again, right? you I, have I agree with the you power that. to get a conversation wherever you want it. And that power is in questions. Mm -hmm. You have you can control a conversation and this this is more than just real estate. You can apply this to your, you know, your your marriage. You can apply this to your kids. You can apply this in any relationship whatsoever. You can get any conversation to go where you want it to go simply with questions. How many of you are coached right now? How many of you have a coach or on a sports team or have somebody who helps them with their music or practice? Do they ever answer you? They never truly answer you. They give you more questions. My husband said to me about a year ago, can you just stop coaching me for a minute and answer me? Cause I need to know. And I was like, well, no, be and he was like, just stop coaching me. <laughs> just give me the answer. And we're both educated. My husband's an educator as well. And I was like, you would do the same thing to me, sir. But it's true. Yeah. We get more, both people get more out of it when you're asking the questions. Yep. And also another thing is someone is going to accept the conclusion they come to quicker than they accept the conclusion you come to. Oh, yes. If you want someone to accept a hard truth, ask questions to make them come to the conclusion of that hard truth, not you. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, so, and I, I love the, the, the portions of value proposition and being a local expert and knowing the market data. That's very important. Can you know everything though? Uh -uh. So one of, when my first day working with United Home Group, uh, Cody Gibson gave me a phone call um, and I was in a meeting, couldn't answer. And this is one of the few voicemails that I, I save. Um, he left a voicemail and he said, Chris, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. Right. And same goes for this. We can know anything, but we can't know everything. Um, so it, if someone asks you a question that you don't know, it is okay to say, I don't know and ask more questions about it and then say, Hey, I'm going to follow up with you. And, and I love that too, because we're not lenders. We're not licensed inspectors. We are not title people. We are not closing attorneys. And when you have those people, it just makes you, your world bigger as well, yep. right? While we may know the question, the answer to the question, we definitely want to point lending questions towards them and say, you know what, that's a great, say Chris was my lender. That's a great question for Chris. And I think I know, but you know what, let's get him on the line and verify because every circumstance is different. Mm -hmm. no, and you now have one, one thing I will add with the, I don't know, um, one practice it, get used to saying, I don't know. It takes confidence to be able to say, I don't know. And I'm going to have confidence in someone that says, I don't know. Hmm because I know that they're honest with me and I know that they're going to go find out. But when you say, I don't know, say, I don't know, I'm going to go look into that and I will get back to you to, today at 5 PM or tomorrow at 3 PM. You set a time and you call back at that time, whether or not you have the answer and you call back and say, Hey, I told you I was going to call you at three. It's three o'clock. And I'm sorry, I was not able to find the answer. You know, my lender wasn't available. I'm going to continue following up with him. I'll get, I'll call you back at 3 p.m. tomorrow by 3 p.m. or whatever and let you know. Right. 
because then you've established yourself as someone of their word and someone they can trust. I love that. I love it. It takes a lot to get to that point too, especially Mm -hmm. somebody who educates you and I both educate. So when we say we have something in this region we do where we stump the RTT and the market center tech trainers, and it's not often somebody stumps me or our market center tech trainers, but I love it when you do, because it means I get to grow as well. Just like all of you should, I love not knowing something because it means we just get better in our businesses. Mm-hmm. All right. Next slide. I think it's uh, back to you, Brooke. It is. So in your participant guide, I think, and again, I'm sorry, my page numbers got, I think it's 11.6 if I counted correctly. We've got some connecting questions mm-hmm. and it's more than small talk. And I know there's a lot of people who are like, I just don't like small talk. But this isn't small talk. This is relationship building. And when I say lead gen, you should always just think relationship building. That's what lead generation is. We've got to get to a point where people are comfortable, they trust us, and they're confident in our abilities. And the only way to get there is almost like dating them, right? It's it's asking the small questions. Um, these Some of these are, who are they, right? How are you digging into who they are? Um, and I think David said it before, back up, can you tell me a little bit more about that or why it's important to you, right? Then you're going to get more information that they may not have shared where they're like, oh, hi, by the way, uh, we're moving because uh, my mother-in-law is sick and we've got to be closer. It's, I have an immediate need and I need to sell this home fast, right? Then you dig into the why of that. Mm -hmm. And it leads us right into what do they actually want or need to do? Um, And this is also why I love neighborhood nurtures and people using our apps and websites because they may tell us one thing, but their browsing habits on the property show us something different. And if they're not logged into your app or website and they're not using the monthly biweekly neighborhood nurtures, you're not gonna have that information. So it's, it's so important to have both pieces, what they're saying, what you're hearing, but what they're doing, and you're able to tie those pieces together. Once they've got it, what do they want or need to do with it? Right? Can you share with me why you're doing this? Why is it so important? We have such a fast turnaround on the sale of your home. Because maybe your mofer was, we sell your house fast. When? Well, I need to sell it fast, but I need to live there an additional three months in case we can't find something, right? And then how do they plan to do it? Have they talked to lenders? Have they started looking at homes? Do they know where they're going? This also helps with expectations of the process because just because you've bought or sold a house previously doesn't mean that the market stays the the same or that it's the same paperwork or the same lender rules. Or maybe they bought in a state and now they're selling and moving and it's different. Things completely change. Paperwork changes, less paperwork, more paperwork. But we're going to get to a point where these questions are going to zero in on true needs, true expectations of the relationship with you. And then we can use these things as tags. Right? So Chris mentioned earlier, you know, I'm selling my house to be close to where my son is going to college and you know he he wants to live there. That was his example, right? I, on the other hand, am trying to get them to not come back home. So I'm downsizing things. <laughs> so now you have a tag from a conversation. What's the tag from the conversation Chris and I had about why I may be selling my home? What are some of those tags? You can put it in the chat because remember, we can hit those meatballs and save them. Hit those meatballs. Mm hmm. Right. What are some of the tags? Can four right off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Graduation. Yep, that's a good one. What about college age kids? How many of you are checking in on your friends who just sent their babies to college for the first time? We're not okay. Yep, retiring. I just sent the middle baby to college. How about right sizing? Right? I have one child left in the house now that this one, this middle one flew the coop, right? Do I want to be in a big house? Do I want to move closer? Do 
Do I want to move to where I want to move? Am I selling the home to fund college? Right, there's all these things. You could pull out the name of the university and pop it in there as well. So if you saw something going on at Salem State University that you think I may have missed, you can then make sure that I'm getting it as a piece of value or you're tagging me on it. Or if you're going out there and you know there's other parents, call them and say, hey, I'm going out this weekend. Does anybody need me to drop anything off to their kids? I've already had people ask me twice in our KW community about that who live out there. Right, that's a piece of value. There's also a whole bunch of questions in there on the next page about, and I think, I'm not sure who is asking this, but those questions before on, what do I say in that call? I think it's Whitley, before I get to, why am, you know, the appointment, they just want the email. I think these are some of those great questions you can back up and use before you even get to the point of, well, hey, now I'd like to get into appointment with you. Um, and and we talk about Ford a lot in our world. Who knows what Ford is? My husband gets Ford. mad when I say found on road dead because he yeah. drives Fords. Family. Mm -hmm. So we got the F. Occupation. Occupation. Yep. There we go. Yeah, occupation. So recreation. Yep. Yep. Dreams. I saw Brianna. Yep. Dreams. Your you know, tags, if you just had four tags, not drinking, David, if you had four tags, you're like, it's so New England. If you had four tags only and they were Ford in your data bank outside of who they are as buyers, sellers, whatever it is, you're winning, right? Mm -hmm. And it could be something like this. You want to riff, Chris? I'm going to be the agent. You can be my client. Absolutely. Make things up as we go. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, hey, Chris, it's Brooke with KW. How you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm good. How about you, Brooke? Good, good. I just dropped Matt off at school and I saw all the pictures of your kids going in for their little grades. How's the family doing? How are the kids doing back to school? Oh, uh, they're good. Um, my daughter hasn't started yet. She'll start kindergarten next year. But uh, yeah, Milo, he's struggling this year. His friends aren't in his class, so he's having kind of a hard That's time. So hard. How's work? What's What are you up to? Are you still working with... Um and you get your business off the ground yeah so we're still you know we're still in a launch phase right now um but it's great to you know not have my full-time job you know not have to juggle my full-time job and the business at the same time i can focus wholeheartedly on the business and uh it's freed up a lot of time oh that's so good so what are you guys doing on the weekends then with all the extra time since you're not running around well this weekend happens to be my birthday so um you know we're Still cooking up something special, but I've got the kids this weekend, oh. so we're going to have, uh, you know, do some family stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Did you guys book that trip yet out to California to go to Disneyland? Well, you know, with, uh, with the business transition, uh, I've, you know, played it safe. We pushed that back a little bit, so. Oh, I don't blame you. And, you know, thought of going to Disney with little kids is never um, an engaging thing you want to do yeah, but hey did i ever tell you that my um sister-in-law she's a disney planner so she could take oh, wow. a bunch of that yeah you want me to make an email connection with you guys yeah definitely i'd love to see what she could do for us that would be awesome Thank oh you. well if we don't talk before your birthday i hope you have the happiest birthday and i'll drop that email for her and i'll connect you guys her name's patty um yeah just see what she can do because maybe she can even get you information i had to push it out but maybe she can do all the hard you know and the heavy lifting now for you so you guys can get out there yeah fantastic all right Chris, you, you take care to we'll talk, talk to patty 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 <laughs> you guys like so i called him to talk and we didn't talk about real estate and it's so okay to not always talk about real estate the other thing is if you don't talk about real estate sometimes the other person will they know you're a realtor they're going to ask the questions how's the market how's things going in your end of the world right so they'll pick that up but i'm telling you when you start having real conversations with people right i hope you guys were hearing all the you heard the forward in order right because he people will um cue you up for the part of the conversation, because I was able to say, oh, what are you guys doing on the weekend now with the extra time that he said he had? 
Um, and I remembered in the past that they, cause so he lives in Florida, so he's not going to Disney down there. They'd go to Disneyland in California instead, right? So now that I know he pushed it out, now I brought a piece of value by connecting him. And I don't have a sister-in-law who does it. She's like a five cousin, twice removed <laughs> type of person, but I do have a Disney planner in the family. But that's an item of value for him because it's something that's important to him with his family. Yep. But it's something he knows he just can't juggle right now. So I just added, a, so he's going to think of me when he's at Disneyland. Just mm -hmm. simple conversations. I mean, how many tags did you pull out, Chris, of that conversation? Oh, yeah, it's, there's more than I can count. Um, a, a great point, too, is, you know, asking about the occupation. Now, I didn't do it because I'm self-centered. But um, <laughs> a lot of times when someone, when you ask someone about their work, the socially acceptable thing to do if you're not self-centered is turn around and say, oh, how about you? How's work going for you? And that's that's, that's just a cue to start talking about real estate. Or family. I, I didn't see that you asked about her about her family after she asked you about. Well, your... Thank you for drilling in the point that I'm self-centered, but. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's not though. But, it, but I also ran that conversation, right? right there right. was no right like i'm a i was in full confidence of my relationship with chris this is not the first mm -hmm. time we've spoken obviously i'm stalking him on social media so i know what to talk about and i've also put notes into my data bank so that the next time i call i can ask about those things but man i could we i ran that conversation not mm -hmm. him not so our clients sometimes and the people we call often run the conversation. I think that's also why we lose confidence in our ability. It's because, oh man, I got derailed so fast. They asked me a question I wasn't prepared for. Don't let it get to that. Run the conversation like yeah. I just did, right? Just run it, run it, run it. But you've got to get it into command. Put it somewhere, yeah. put it on a note. I use the lady in the box. Or if you changed over to the Australian dude, I use the tech at my disposal to help me remember to put things. And now that we have the command app, as soon as you get off the phone, I got off the phone with Chris, I would have voiced to text all those notes because I enjoy seeing what my phone picks up on what it thinks I'm saying. It's like a game now to me to try to read my notes later and be like, mm, that is not what we talked about. Because I have that good New England nasally allergies. You know, it's that time of year here for the fall. But staying in that now chris did you feel important to me did you oh, feel absolutely. like i, I value yeah. our relationship yeah. guys do you think i value his relationship and he values me based on a quick phone call that's and that's what a lot of your lead gen can sound like let them lead the conversation do we have to talk about real estate absolutely but can we lead with our heart and be decent human beings first absolutely people do business with people they like Simon mm -hmm. Sinek has said that when they, when you do business with people you like, you're excited to refer to them. You're excited to talk about your experiences, right? I might not help Chris move another property for four or five years, but how many people can say their realtor has stayed in constant communication and has brought something to their life outside of buying or selling a mm -hmm. home, right? So Laura, I got that dumpster listing yesterday because of all of what you were saying. Exactly. You also have to have elephant ears. You have to be listening for the cues and the flags that people are looking to make a move. I go to yard sales on the weekend. Do you know why? Because people are moving when they have big yard sales, mm. right? I am watching my community dumpster fires, AKA community Facebook groups to see what's going on. And I'm offering advice and items of value so that other people are tagging me in as the expert. And that's so much fun. Especially in when community groups have 40, 50 realtors in them, and all of a sudden the nerd girls getting ding, ding, ding. You need to talk to Brooke about this. It's, it's the most fun you can have. It's the best game on Facebook right now. Yeah. And as you guys are growing your databases, one thing that I love you did is that you did connect me with a, a different business, right? And right. as you guys are growing your databases, you should also be growing them with business to business relationships. And you should be doing this with your business to business relationships as well. Is, um, I don't know if you've ever heard this quote um, or this statement, but um, employees are not are not loyal to employers. They're loyal to the lifestyle that the employer affords them, right? Mm -hmm. People don't quit jobs. They quit managers, right? So if you want someone to be loyal to you, 
you impact their life, their lifestyle. You help them have live a better life. And that doesn't always have to mean buying or selling a home. That can mean, oh, the, you know, hey, the mortgage rates were super low and I helped that person get a refinance and save, mm-hmm. you know, thousands of thousands of dollars. I help that person find a painter or a pressure washer or whatever they need. So you're that go, you're a go through person, right? You're the go to (laughs) for the other things that you need. What's that also going to get you? It's going to get you referrals. Yes, because guys, we're a lot of fish in a pond. And when we come in, we are, and I love our preferred partners. And so this is not a dish on them at all. Like this is not a diss. This is but you live in a town where you could have access to unlimited referrals if we worked as hard at business to business relationships as we did on our lender or title or closing attorney or inspector relationships. There's a lot of us and a few of them, but everywhere you go is a referral source from the gas station to the coffee place to where you pick up your dry cleaning, get your eyebrows did. David's look fantastic today. Like all those places, those are your hyper local community. You are the expert. So connecting people is one of the most fabulous things realtors can do. I'm your friend for life. I want to be that. If you've got a problem with your home, go to Brooke. Go ahead, Jason. Mm-hmm. I'm just reading in the chat. Can we ask Laura Gold to expand on offering discounts from preferred vendors what that looks like absolutely um i mean i have so i live in my town one of the reasons i got this dumpster listing last week too is you know i talked to them about not using money out of the estate and if anything came up that i had a pocket full of preferred vendors for them. And not only was that pocket full of preferred vendors, the best people in the business in my town, they also offered discounts to them because I give them lots of business. So these people will take care of them faster, easier, better, and perhaps give them 10% off or whatnot for, you know, so I can call up my preferred vendors. They can, they know, I mean, the electrician goes to people's house. He knows if he's moving, right? Right. The plumber goes to people's house. They know if they're, so I work all of these things and I get my people business. Not only do they show up faster when I need them, but they also let me put their bills on the closing disclosure at at closing. So I don't have to have my people come up with any money to fix their problems. Sometimes (laughs) maybe, Uh, materials right but almost always at least the labor will go on the closing state because a lot of people don't have money until they have their closing i work the three d's a lot i am divorced death and deferred maintenance so these people don't have tons of money a lot of times and it's so true and laura thank you for that so much but it's true you can cultivate a group they're your preferred vendors for a reason right we we do that often in our closed group in our own businesses it's Who's got something they need to push, right? So it's it's July. I'm already talking to all the landscapers in town to see who's got openings for fall cleanups. And can I give my database a discount to book early with a certain code? None of our preferred vendors are going to say no to free marketing. They may say, I, I just don't have the ability to take on more clients because you've given me so many. So you say, great, who should I call next then? Who would you trust with your maintenance of your pool, of your yard, of all these things? And that right there is the connection to cultivate and keep these relationships. Because it's not just buy, sell, or invest. This is relationships for life, right? We want to be in relationship with these people for absolute life. And it gets back to reconnecting. So in a systematic way, if you're worried about the touches you're making with these people, just what Laura is doing is reach out to your community. Um, But we've got to stay top of mind. And what we've learned through other chapters is we've got that 36 touch, right? And we've talked, it seems aggressive. It's not, that's a mindset that we've got to get around. You've got the 19 to one. And that's a way for people who you've never met, your have not met to get into conversation with you or get them into some type of maintenance program where you're just dripping on them, right? That target campaign. No, you don't need a rug today, but now the dog barfed on it and you need a rug tomorrow. Oh, I saw that in my target notifications that Chris doesn't mm-hmm. say no to, right? You're going to be there when you need them and you're going to constantly remind them why you're so valuable you have the best plumbers you have the best contractors roofers right all the good people that people need 
I've got the best hookup for eyebrows. Like I'm petrified to tell people in town how great she is because now I can't get appointments when I need them, right? I go to the same dry cleaner, the same person who hems my pants because I'm I'm 5'1 and, and petite pants is a myth, right? So yeah. now they're busy. <laughs> now they're busy, but it's because of great mind sharing on those things. So as you start your touch campaigns, as you start thinking about how am I going to close people? Remember, closing someone is a referral as well. It's not just people who buy, sell, or invest. That referral part, consider that a closing as well because you did your job. You brought value to someone's life and that person shared your value with someone they want more value to come to. So referrals are so important to our business. So think about them coming from a business in your town, not just the people who you're interacting with. And don't be scared to put your vendors in your database and tag them thus, vendor, then what they do. But also guys, within each contact, scroll to the very bottom to the about section. And in there, in my best Canadian accent, is a place where it says workplace and title. Guys, everybody did something in their lives. Nobody had, well, some do. Oh, Rhode Island, Cranston area, there's mattress money, but you can't get a mortgage with mattress money, right? So you've got to have a job or something to get you. You have to have funds to get you to mortgages. So people did something and those people could be valuable to someone else. David White and I may not need the same set of vendors, but Brianna and I might, right? So I'm gonna bring this, they're gonna still call me and go, Brooke, who does X, Y, Z? Who do you know and trust? And I'm going to say either these three people or you know what? Let me make a few phone calls because I haven't heard that one before, but I think I know. I just want to make sure they're still doing it. Get in front of your people in a different way and then use those touch campaigns to systematically remember to do things. Now, controversial. Yes, we have to make phone calls. Yes, we have to have two-way messaging. That's just not you bulk texting. It's when people say, high back and a conversation happens it goes this way it's not you shouting at the wall or the computer screen if you've got someone who you know is going to be a time suck quickly get the text out to them have a quick conversation i call them time sucks because they just suck the time out of your life but it's okay that patty too chatty wants to talk to you schedule a time with her or go out to coffee when you get to control that time so that aunt patty too chatty who always refers people to you still feels valued and that you're thinking about her but that you just don't you know you don't have the time and you know 45 minutes is going to be gone and there's big part of your legion time gone so think about things like that the how how do people want to be communicated with? Would they love a card in the mail? Would they love X, Y, Z? And it all comes back to having this information in your database. And when you understand how those touch campaign works, oh, friends, what people don't realize, it's like this hidden secret. Who remembers those yellow books from the 80s and 90s called For Dummies? You could go Nintendo well, For Dummies. They still make them. They do. And I feel so bad because it sounds so negative. I lived by them. I <laughs> ripped up all the Adobe ones when I was in graphic design school. But smart plans is actually lead gen for dummies. Because mm -hmm. when you effectively use the, the smart plans, every day you walk in, you open your phone, you'll have all these tasks. The, the secret is that's lead gen. That's, that's mm -hmm. lead gen right there. And you don't even have to think. And guess what? You won't fight yourself on it anymore. You won't pretend to be lead generating or on Facebook, pretending that you're having these two-way conversations. And I just love how, how big smart plans can really make it. So that way, no call is ever a cold call when you've provided an item of value before. Hey, Chris, calling because I saw in the email I sent you last week that three of your neighbors went under agreement. Mm. How's all the yard sales going on in your neighborhood, friend, right? Like you yeah. can... It's nothing is ever cold anymore when you use smart plans to queue, to queue you up, whether it's a piece mm -hmm. of direct mail, um, calling up to see, you know, somebody was talking about cold calling. Was it Whitley? Yeah, you're doing golden letter stuff. So if you're sending a golden letter before farming and making the actual phone call, now it's not cold anymore because, hi, I'm following up on the letter I sent a few weeks ago. Oh, you didn't get it? Here's what the gist of it is. And I'll also put it in an 
email to you at the end of this phone call, right? So now it's not cold anymore because you've cultivated the beginning of a relationship through direct mail or text message, email. They're not going to be like, Brooke Silva? Who? The nerd? Nah, it doesn't ring a bell, right? There's, I've got your mind share now. So using the smart plans can just make it easier for you, right? And, oh, where'd my other slide go? Oh, there it is. Um, so guys, why do you think we struggle when it comes to cultivating relationships? Why do you think it is so, yeah, TCPA compliant message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the office space. <laughs> TCPA report's done. And why do you think we struggle so much with the cultivating of relationships, the not talking about real estate? Why do you think that's so difficult for everyone? Anybody. Need a mission. Mm, big why. I like that. Mm-hmm. Perhaps it doesn't feel like it will generate results. Right. We've talked about this. This is not a fast business. This, nothing happens fast. Mm-hmm. The things you do today, 90 days is when you see the, the results. Right. What else? What Why I've else heard do you lot. think we don't? Tell me if you've heard this one. Um, I don't want to sell my friends and family. My favorite, that, that was my favorite. Because how many of you come out swinging like cut cone knife people? Like you're like in the messages, guess what? And you're just like, real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate. Um, who's been in any of my database classes where I talk about Doris, the Doris effect. Okay. Doris is my four foot nine mother who loves to tell you when you're wrong. So I use the Doris effect to my advantage in all things business. And I learned this a long time ago where people want to help you, but mostly people love to tell you when you're wrong, AKA Doris. So we say things like, I'm sure you've seen by now on Facebook that I've changed careers. I'm not calling to sell you. What I'm calling is to ask for help or emailing or texting. If you see something, the best thing you could do is tell me if it doesn't sound like my voice or if you see a mistake. Also, would you like, love, share my posts or my Facebook page? My business depends on word of mouth and referrals. And I would really appreciate you doing that for me. Can I put you on my touch lists? Nobody in your family is going to be like, "Mm, you're on your own, sister. Good luck in your new thing. Nobody. When you ask for help from your family, nobody's going to be like, I mean, you might have Patty might, you know, like how Patty might, because she's just negative all the time. (laughs) But when you do that, then all of a sudden, Doris is looking for my emails because she wants to tell me I did something wrong. And my favorite way to do that is I put weird places on her monthly neighborhood nurture. Like I put where her grandparents were from near Montreal. And she was like, why are you sending me things in Canada? Don't you want to see what's going on in the mothership, right? Like... If you see where people like to vacation all the time, if their uh, family lives there, put those on your neighborhood nurtures, right? Yep. Get them get them to get back to you and be like, oh, I think you sent me something wrong. It's the Doris effect, friends. It works. People love mm-hmm. to tell you when you're wrong. They'll never compliment you when you're right. Yep. Doris. Well, and then, and then a mindset shift around that. Um, I asked a good friend of mine this, uh, and it really shook him. How would you feel... If your aunt calls you up one day and says, Brooke, I just sold my home and it was the worst experience I've ever had in my life. And I lost tens of thousands of dollars. Thanks for calling me first jerk. No, <laughs> that's what we're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but if, it, if you're not calling them, if they don't know you're a real estate agent and you just happen to be at the family reunion and have a conversation you're like, oh my gosh, it was a nightmare. We had this issue when we lost this much money and our realtor didn't know Jack nothing about anything. And oh, how did it make you feel? Like I feel like garbage. I just got that text message during the break. Hey, so-and-so is putting their house on the market. And my first thing was with whom? <laughs> I didn't know. And what makes me even matter is that we were dripping on them, but they don't want to do business with family. And that's a whole other thing. But, but you do feel like garbage right it's that it's the it's the signpost to the heart it's the signpost to the heart but again we didn't do our jobs we didn't say to our family we have the ability to separate family and business we just want to make sure you get the most for you go ahead jason 
you just said, and I want you to tell me how to deal with this. If I, if there's a way at all to deal with this, please tell me how. I don't want to do business with family objection. How do I overcome that? Because that's a real. I didn't realize that was a real thing in the world until oh, I. Oh, it is. It's a real thing in the world. So how do we get it over? Is. It is, and I think we. I'm going to find the exact script book for it because it's so well done that I don't want to give it. I don't want to mess it up. So I will find it either email it to you directly or put it in the, but there is a way, Chris, do you remember it from the original Ignite book? I'll have to I, find it. I don't it. remember um, exactly. So. Yeah, I'll find it because it's really good. It's one of the original Ignite scripts, but there mm -hmm. are ways to overcome it. And some of it is, who would you want in your court if something did come down to a problem? Somebody who's going to fight for you because we're family, right? Or somebody who's not as bought into you being successful in your real estate transaction. I'll put it in the Facebook group. Jason, I love that you brought that up. Thank you so much. It might even be in the newer script book, but there are family objections and I'll find them. They're either bold um, or ignite. So let's keep rocking and rolling because I want to make sure we can get to the command part. Again, thank you so much. That was a a great question mm -hmm. um so let's talk about the close so when you guys are talking to people which of uh, the ones on the screen is the most effective way to get people to close in the person, appointment all day long what is it in person all day long but what if yeah. you can't get in front of them what's the next phone phone, phone. i think it goes right. backwards right in the order you got it Exact. It actually does. And then you can use the other mediums as reminders for the appointments, right? How many of you knew that you can connect your KW Google to command and right from the client's contact, send them a calendar invite? Ooh, 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 ooh. It's so great. Least effective options are always going to be text messages and emails. How many of you actually read your email every day? You don't, don't put your hands up. Don't even try to lie to me. It's like this, it's this disease you get called RDR as soon as you get a new license, realtors don't read. Like it's, and it's okay. We just yeah. get bombarded with so many messages. It's, it's a real thing and it happens. So in-person phone calls are okay. Do not leave a voicemail asking for an appointment though. Ask them to get back mm -hmm. to you. You have some important stuff to discuss with them. Um, don't ever be like, hi, I'm just calling to set up the appointment because then you're an appointment setter. Right? Then you're not on a person of value. It's, hey, give me a quick call when you have a moment. Um, and then just get them on the phone and say, I've got some important stuff that I feel would be go better if we just went over it in person. Again, I've got these two times available because we time block because we're good agents. Does, do mornings or afternoons work? I've got Thursday at 10 a.m. or I've got Friday at 3 p.m. Which is better for you? I didn't say no appointment. Pick one. It's like, I think too, when you're a parent, you become really good at not giving options. Like, you, oh, you don't want to eat dinner? That's cute. You can sit here with the rest of us and eat it later. Or you can just go to bed, right? Just go to bed. Mm -hmm. I, I love phone conversations. And it's funny because as the age group I am and, and the, um, the world I live in for technology, it's really interesting how much I enjoy the phone conversation, because we live in a world now where people are sick of virtual, they're sick of Zoom. It's hard to be on Zoom every day. It's hard to live in a place where you only see little people's avatars walk around. I want to be in the offices. I want to be in front of humans. Sometimes they just go work at coffee shops so I can see other people doing peopley things. Feels so good. And I'm a people watcher and I enjoy it. Mm. Um, so when we're, we're, so we know go backwards. Boom, 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 boom. What are the most important things and elements we need to schedule? Oops, sorry. What are the most important things we need to get before that, uh, that um, appointment? Who's who? Who's who? Is everybody who has a part in the purchase of this home available on that day so we can all get together, mm -hmm. right? Who are the most in people? Who's going to be helping you make decisions? Are you making it alone? Right? Mother, brother, spouse, partner, Aunt Patty, chatty Aunt Patty, right? Maybe we shouldn't have her. 
But we're not just looking for a yes for the appointment. We're looking for more information to solidify. Where are you meeting? What is convenient to them? I love meeting people in the office. Yes, for listing appointments, do we need to see their house? But it's wonderful to have buyers in the office, one, because we're getting people back in the office, but to see you in your professional space. Right, where when people walk by, they're saying, hey, Brooke, hey, Laura, hey, everyone, how you doing, right? And they see the community, not just this lady wants me to buy things with her. Mm -hmm. um, and we another go po another to point that. to that, too, is just where you meet someone is also a safety concern. Yes. Right? If you're meeting them in the office, you have witnesses, you have other people around you, you're in mm -hmm. a physically safe location. Um, avoid any and especially getting all parties involved say for a listing uh, appointment is very important so that you know you have multiple people inside the home when you're in there with them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as a newer agent i know that when i was doing things in the office my husband was doing things in the office if he had a question at the end after he's like you know what let me just grab I'm just gonna go see if I can find this question before you guys even leave today. Cause there was always someone in the office that could answer a question. Our broker was right there, the team leader, MCA. There's always someone who could definitely um, get that information out there. Hey, Teresa, can you throw the group information in? So um, the, our friends who joined us, let, yeah, thank you, thank you. Mary, I'm gonna put that in the group for you so you can get that Facebook group. So let's hop through um, ahas on that section. Anything be like, wow. You can put it right in the um, chat. Love one person to come off mute before we go over to the conversion rates, because I really want to get to the command piece to show you guys what a healthy contact looks like. And I know we're running through this fast. Ignite should be called fire hose. Yeah. yeah. Brooke, Brooke and I can get together and we can chat it up. Go ahead. Sorry, Jason. Go ahead, Jason. Huge aha, grow database with B2B. So I'm going to reach out, out to you offline, you and Chris, about that one, actually. Yeah, brookthenerd.com. If you go under the resource room, I've got something called, what's the name of my Super Mario Brothers class? Um, Ready Player One. I've actually got something you can do every day to help you build a better database. But bigger than that, ask your market center to bring me in and I'll teach it. I roll up a Super Mario. We have a crazy day. We color, we jump around. You will learn B2B because that was my baby. That's how I built my sales world. I love that. Thank you. Little plug. See a little shameless plug too. Little, little mm -hmm. lead generating there. Real All right, Chris. Conversion here. rates. Where are you from? Sorry. Me? I'm in yeah, Wilmington, yeah. Mass. So I'm like centrally located. So we can we can schedule something too in the Boston Metro. Uh huh. Just have your team leader or PC reach out to me. Awesome. Thanks. And it's free awesome. 99 in case you needed to know cost. It's free 99. Nice. By the way, I'm in Florida. I didn't even mention that. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. I'd love to come up there and teach one day. I've um, been bugging, bugging Brooke about that. Okay, back to the content. Um, so now we're on the conversion rate page. Um, you learn the model steps and actions to take to convert a lead to an appointment. Uh, now we're going to dig deeper into what a com uh, what the a conversion rate is and how it can inform your business decisions. Um, it's funny, the word conversion and conversation. Yeah. Thrown around a lot in here. Um, your conversion rate refers to the percentage of leads you ask for an appointment to those that agree to the appointment. For example, you may ask 10 leads for an appointment and succeed in setting eight appointments that's a what percent? Who's a numbers person? I don't math. I don't math. 80%. Math. Um, thank you. Um, so 80%. Uh, your ultimate goal is to increase your skill so you can convert at the highest percentage possible. The higher the percentage, the more leads um, have converted to appointments, obviously. Uh, and more if closings. You're Yes. If you were converting at a low percentage, this should tell you that you have um, a lead conversion challenge. The challenge is not the number of leads generated, but your ability to get them to an appointment. 
Now, I love this because I, I do I, I speak with a lot of agents who who think that they have a lead problem. And in this day and age, there's very few agents who actually have a lead problem. Um, and many of them don't live in America. Um, <laughs> so we don't have a lead problem. We generally have a lead conversion problem. And this is why it's so important to track your numbers because you can see like you track it down to everything. Like how many dials did you make today? How many conversations did you have? How many of those converted to an appointment? How many appointments convert to a contract? How many contract or uh, an agreement? How many agreements convert to a pending? How many pendings convert to a closing? But wow, Chris, that seems like a lot. Isn't there a place they can track this in a couple clicks? Yes, there is. <laughs> So yeah, in, in command, if you track, if you are inputting the things that you're doing in command, you can track these things. Um, there is a awesome little widget on the front page that will even tell you your, your numbers there. Um, the only caveat is that you have to actually use the CRM in order for it to track you. So, right, you have to put the dates. But what's fantastic is you can zero in on the one activity, the one thing that you need to dial in to increase your business. And you know what's always great when I sit with agents or top agents whose business has changed and they'd like some help is they stopped doing the thing that worked because they stopped tracking when they got busy. So at the end of the day, when we get things organized and we start looking at where their closings are coming from, it is never usually the things they are paying thousands of dollars a month for. It's the foundational activities. And when we start tracking them again, and I think that's so important to you guys, because we don't, if you're not seeing that it's working, you're going to go on to something else. Mm-hmm. So we start tracking those conversion ratios by using opportunities, by putting calls in and you see it's working. I don't know about you guys, but I get excited. I mm -hmm. get so excited. Yep. How, I mean, how convenient is it and how peaceful is it to be able to say, I know that if I call X number of people this month, that I will have a closing. Just because you know that for every so many calls, you get so many appointments, they get you so many agreements, they get you so many pendings, they get you so many closings. It's so easy to break down what I need to wake up and do today. Right. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So next slide. Oops. Oops. So we're going to look at ways to improve your conversion rates. Um, so again, we're on that. Beautiful. All right. Once you understand what your conversion rate is, you can move from E to P. Who knows what that means? What's E and what's P? Someone that's not Brooke. I entrepreneurial to purposeful. Beautiful. Yes. Entrepreneurial to purposeful. You should have talked about this in day one. Um, and it's a, one of those six personal perspectives. That's a class that I love teaching uh, and attending. So, this is when you get more purposeful in improving your conversion rate. Essentially, everything I was just talking about, gaining insight and getting more purposeful will ultimately bring you more closed transactions. Some activities you can engage in to improve your conversion rates might include time blocking for lead conversion, um, if you erase it, replace it, um, and use conversions and systems, or sorry, conversations and systems. Um, yeah, time blocking is just kind of the obvious thing to do. Uh, it's the hardest. It is the hardest, yeah. And but it is if we're not time blocking, we're we're failing at everything else. There's no way you can yep. do everything else in this um, it, any of these other steps without first time blocking. Um, Number three is uh, don't neglect any part of your database. Reconnect with each person. And when you do, ask for referrals. And number four, know who to prioritize. In an upcoming session, um, in the lead follow-up segment, you will learn how to prioritize potential clients. 
prioritizing, uh, sorry, pr prioritize converting those qualified leads while still working on the rest of your database. This is number four is really, really important. But again, you have to do one, two, and three first. You have to earn the right to do number four, right? If I don't have, if I have 10 people in my database, I've not earned the right to prioritize those leads yet because I only have 10 people, right? But if once I am time blocked, I'm systematized and I've connected with all my database and I can know who is who, I can know who's a hot work, nurture and watch, so on and so forth. Then I know that if they're a hot, I need to call them every week mm -hmm. that I need to prioritize this person. If they're a watch, you know, once a month, I can, I don't have to put my 20% effort into that person. 80-20 principle also in the six personal perspectives. Um, and you know what's great about that is we have smart plans to tell you that. It's why KW has their own called mid-nurture, mm -hmm. long-term nurture, or those hot smart plans when people are ready to go now. Like yep. this doesn't have to be something that's difficult. It's And when, when you come in in the morning and you see your tasks, you can actually sort your data bank by hot first. Yep. And I've also, I've heard people also using like a grading system. Um, yeah. So like A, you know, like A, a B, plus. C, D, F, yeah. um, right? So like I would, like, yeah, my my parents, they're going to die in the home that they live in. So I would grade them a D if I'm using an A to D scale. Right. Yeah, they're, they're high priority in my personal life. They're absolutely worthless to me in my business life. <laughs> <laughs> they're great referral <laughs> partners, Chris. Yeah, but- Unless they're, but now if they start bringing me referrals, right, I'm still going to, a D, I'm still going to, I'm still going to communicate with, I'm not going to totally ignore them. But if they start bringing me referrals, then they're going to start jumping up a little bit on my, my grading scale. So yeah, Trip there's different it. ways to do it. Watch Nurture Hot, I, I think is the best place to start when you're prioritizing. All right. So thank you for cueing me to continue. <laughs> Every lead has the potential to turn into a uh, business and you have, um, and as you've already heard, there are no bad leads. There kind of are, but only if they give you bad information. Uh, with right. the lead conversion model, you've learned capture the appropriate information so you can connect with the lead, connect to assess their needs and evaluate a relationship cultivate the relationship not all people will convert directly to an appointment so use touch campaigns to stay top of mind and as we mentioned 18 months right the average consumer sits in a database for 18 months yeah the average time someone's going to remember you is 11 days you need to do a lot of work over that 18 months to make sure that they're not forgetting you in that 11 day window uh close by asking for the appointment you're in control of this ask, no one else. Yep. So I think next Run is we're going to get into, um, we're going to get into the command, we're right? We're going to command for you guys. So before we get into command, I want two things. Um, so one, I'm a Keller Williams University approved trainer. Um, Brooke, are you approved yet? Like this close, just wait for okay. one more class. Yeah. Okay, so them. you're you're in the process. Now, part of this process, now, to me, uh, next steps for me is to become master faculty. And one of the one of the ingredients to become either KWU approved or master faculty is that we need to acquire uh, yeah. evaluations. So Kate Keller Williams University evaluation. So one ask that I have of you before we move into the next section, if you could all go to kwueval.com and rate, uh, give us a, um, an evaluation of how we did, how we've done today so far. Uh, my name is in the dropdown as Chris Orsini. Brooke's name won't be yet, so you'll have to add her name in. Um, and this is Ignite Session 11. 11. So you yeah. can just choose that in the dropdown. Now, one point that I like to make is that on a scale from one to five, one is worst, five is best. I know you're going to go in there and be like, Chris and Brooke are number one. In this case, no, we're not. We're number five. Okay. We shoot, we shoot for fives. Um, but so while you're doing that, and I'd I'm love Brooke to hear. Silva. Brooke Silva. Silva. So there's a whole bunch of Brooke Silver evaluations because people think I just have this heavy New England accent. It's Silva. 
like not silver with a mass accent kw eval they were giggling when we figured out where all my evals were they thought it was brooks silver with a mass accent it's silva mm -hmm. good portuguese married into good portuguese family it's silva silva mm -hmm. and i'm gonna right. give and you then... guys all my contact info as well Mm -hmm. If you gave me your email earlier, you're getting the Cyber Ninja news and you'll always have my information there. And on my website, a lot of the things we talk about, they're there. And just ask. Just ask. We are always here to answer your questions as a region, your labs advisor family. We love to help agents grow through the tools we have and break it down in a different way uh, for you guys to help with the learning. So thank you, Chris, for pointing that out. Yep. And yeah, I, I dropped my email in the chat as well. If anyone wants to reach out to me, any way I can help, I'm super happy to connect. So, um, and then if you guys stick around at the end, there was a, a really cool thing that I learned uh, a little uh, sort of recently that I'd love to give you guys. So stick through this. And then I got one cool piece of value that I want to drop on you at the end. So Chris, I'm an agent. I just got done working with someone I met. I want to add them mm -hmm. to my data bank. What do I do? Walk me through what it looks like to put a clean client in and we can make up the info, but walk me through yeah. what that looks yeah. like. Okay. So we're going to click on contacts because that's obviously where our contacts are going to go, right? We all have entered a contact into our phone. We understand that, right? So here we are in contacts. We're going to click the add contact button in the top right, which again is a pretty obvious move. Um, so we're going to first put in their full name. Um, so Joe Schmo, Bob, blah, blah, blah. Bob, blah, blah is one of my favorite people to put in. Um, we're going to put in their email address, phone number. I mean, so far, this is pretty uh, idiot proof, right? Um, now, we do have the – okay, so – we do have the add relationship button. So if we if we know that there's a Jane Schmo, we can add Jane Schmo in there. And this automatically adds that contact in there as well and connects them. Um, so next we're going to do, let's see, uh, lead source type. Um, we're gonna look at the lead source. Now we want to go in and find, yeah, so let's say this came off of realtor.com. Cool, we click on it. Um, now there's the mark as lead button. Um, we, lead means this is a person that we have their information, but we have never contacted them. There's never been two-way communication. I've sent them emails, text messages, phone calls, knocked on their door, followed them to work, and they've never responded to me. <laughs> Once they respond to you, then you can unmark that. Um, next is tags. Tags, I, I love tags. This is where we can get nice and um, in detail with these. Uh, yeah. Firefighter. Put Fuzzy's Tacos. That's my favorite taco place. That um, is one of my, yeah. Yep. I promise you it's not a strip club. It's just a taco place. Um, all right. And then we can add more information because this is obviously not all the information we want on someone. We can click add additional contact information. We can add more emails, more phone numbers. We want to put in their home address. What's great is once you put their home address in, it's going to find the neighborhood that that address falls into and add that neighborhood to that contact. Then you can easily put them on the monthly or biweekly neighborhood nurture, and it will send them information on their specific neighborhood. Add your Facebook profiles. This is perfect. So when I was on the phone with Brooke, I mentioned that my birthday was coming up. Brooke can now go onto Facebook and see exactly what day my birthday is and leave me uh, 20, 25th, actually. Uh, you know, send me a card, wish me happy birthday, call me, text me, you know, send me a bunch of money, whatever she's going to do. Um, she wants to add the company in here. Guys, really important. If you're going to so say someone sends you a referral, right, and you want to send them a gift basket for sending you a referral, do you want to send that gift basket to their home or to their job? <laughs> David's face just lit up like a job. little Christmas bulb. A job. 
Yeah. And why is that? Why would you want to send it to their job? Is that kind of weird to send gifts to people's work? Well, because work? that's like creating more leads or more opportunity for other people to ask questions and be like, where are you getting this from? And it's from my realtor. Oh, and then, you know, you could, they can start talking or referring you to, it's just a, a there you go. snowball yep. effect. Yep. hundred percent. It's FOMO, right? People don't want to miss out on it. When's the last time you got flowers or a delivery at work? Everybody gets nosy. Where did you get that from? What's in the box? Who sent you flowers? Why are you getting chocolate dipped strawberries, right? Like one year, my husband sent me flowers to work that were obscene. Remember that, Chris? The year it took up the entire conference table. It was a big anniversary. Mm. It really wasn't. But in his head, it was. (laughs) Yeah. Is it pulling a Ross Geller? Okay, uh, and then custom. We can get into, say there's something in here that uh, we don't, that's not in here stock that we want to add. We can add custom fields. Um, I don't think it's important to get into now, but it is. No, but quick, if you do want to add something and you think it's custom, it's a tag because you cannot sort Mm -hmm. your database by those custom fields. So that would be just a memory jogger for you. So something that's so important is if you think you need a custom field, I'm going to tell you now you need a tag. Easier to sort and filter your data bank. Yeah. And then we click create. There he is. And then we can pull him up now. Oh. I have to pull him up. He's in my all contacts. There we go. There we go. Great. And now what's fantastic is you can go in and add more tags add more tags uh dtd2 if anyone uses dtd2 that is a fantastic tag because then you can filter by it and you have a call list and you just click next 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 and call and then you can put in your activities in the notes what's dtd2 oh great question and if you hit bold up you'll learn all about it it's magic what and i teach on it doing Doing the the database database too essentially you're calling two letters of the alphabet every week you divide the alphabet, which is 26 by two, and it gives you 13. 13 weeks is a quarter. It makes so it so you don't cherry that, pick who you're going to yeah. call because we all know somebody comes up on that list and you're like, not today, Satan. You will not ruin my mm-hmm. day, but I know I have to get something of value out to you. So I'm going to choose a text message or a handwritten note card. Um, yep. So that way you can just move on in your day because how many of you have people in your database, you see their name and your stomach acid starts turning? Yeah. Two things, either connect with them or don't. That is the one time I delete people. If they make you so sick to your stomach that you cannot click, call them, text them, do something. That is my only rule of they, they don't need to rule your stomach and your tums or your heart or soul. Get rid of them. Mm-hmm. But we can see a whole bunch of info. And right from here, as long as you have smart plans, you can deploy it. Right. So if I'm on my phone and I add them quickly because you had three people out of the 70 who don't have a realtor at an open house, you can put them right away on the promote my app. Right. Boom. He's going to get it. Yep. It's three touches. I want it to go now. Or if it feels too aggressive, set it for the next day. No problem. Mm-hmm. And then as you're adding more and more smart plans, right? Monthly neighborhood nurture. And I know this is going to fail because Joe Schmo is a fake person with a fake email. Oh, I don't have a neighborhood. So it tells you, you got to build the neighborhood, mm-hmm. but now you're going to be able to start seeing how many people are on smart plans and all the activity they're doing, right? So this person has a map real quick. I'm just going to look and add any garbage that's around here. Bloop, 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 bloop. Right, so now I could put them on a smart plan and you'll see an error if something doesn't happen again because blah, 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 does not exist. Yeah. And real quick, one of the things I want to show you guys, do you see the neighborhood nurtures that coming up or do you only still see my contacts? I see the neighborhood nurtures coming up. Awesome. So now watch this. I'm just going to go in and do a couple of things. Um, I'm going to go, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to look around. I'm going to do some stuff. Oops, I got to move my bar. Oh, I'm going to look at this. Why is something 279? Oh, okay. Okay. It's a condo. It's pending. I'm going to save it anyway. When your consumers are in here playing around, it comes back to their timeline. Mm-hmm. Right? So look, I can see that the client favorited a listing and viewed it and that they viewed the neighborhood and they 
favorited this listing and now I have a reason to reach out and talk to them. My yep. favorite story about this is my husband as a realtor. We sold someone their home and about a year and four months in, I said to my husband, you need to call them today. They are getting divorced. And he was like, you are sick. What is wrong with you? And I'm like, "Uh, uh, uh-uh-uh, monthly neighborhood nurture. They are both active. They're looking to downsize their five bedroom, three bath house. And they're both looking at townhouses and condos. Sir, you pick up the phone right now and call him. They are getting divorced. Lo and behold, they were getting a very amicable divorce. But if it hadn't been for this neighborhood nurture and what he said, it's funny. And his name was Joe too. He worked on fire. My husband, he goes, We were just about to reach out to you this week. Unfortunately, we're breaking up. It's all good. Everybody's happy. We're good friends, but we want to stay in the same school system. So we were figuring out what we needed to do before we called you. Adam didn't even say three things to them before they just like vomited all the information we needed to know. But if it hadn't been for the neighborhood nurture and the fact that you can see when people are recently active by this column, right? I could see that Joe Schmo was active on September 19th. So this is how I like to see my data bank every day. I want to see who's playing with my smart plans, who's looking at properties, filtering in the app, on the website. That is why it's so important to be in the same ecosystem. This is valuable data. My husband thinks there's something wrong with me still to this day that I, that was like where my head went, but it's true. People don't look for smaller places when they just bought a home together. So these will give us the clues we need. To, I wouldn't reach out and be like, hey, Chris, y'all breaking up? Yeah. Y'all breaking up? Uh, why are you searching for this? I'm not going to rat the, white, the wife out or the husband out. Yeah. But I'm going to call. And it was just so funny because I heard the whole thing. And he said, oh, my goodness, Adam. We were just talking about you and going to reach out. And we, we got to help sell their house and they each bought a condo like i I don't know about you would you like three extra units just by paying attention to your database Mm -hmm. it makes such a world of difference and guys this is at no additional cost this is not an extra plug-in there's no fee to run a monthly neighborhood nurture every human in your data bank could have this Mm -hmm. start with your family do you remember what i said about chatting it up with your family i need your help I need your help. Yep. Right? Could you like, love, share my posts? Could you support my business by reading the emails, making sure I don't make mistakes and get back to me when I do? Can I put you on my client gratitude list so you see the events? And if you know anybody who may be interested in a first time home buyer seminar, send them my way. That sounds a lot smoother than, are you looking to buy, sell, invest? Mm-hmm. Right? Friends, right, did Brooke, you have I, any other questions? I did promise. I did promise a little nugget at the end for those who oh, stuck, stuck to the end. And I'm actually going to give you two. I just want to see so if could... anybody has a question first, though, about oh, okay, what I just that. went over with contacts. If you um, put my this. Question, sorry, I have a question. So if they don't um, sign up to your app, because I, I noticed that the first thing that you did when you put this person Joe Schmo in your database, you put them on a smart plan that said um, app or whatever for them to sign up with the app. Mm-hmm. Um, where would I get that? Where would I get that smart plan? Number one, and do they have yeah. to sign up to it in order for you to be able to, um, I don't know, see what they're doing? Sure. So as long as your green toggle switch and your marketing profile is turned on. So if you go up to your name here, let me show you. I forgot I I stopped sharing real quick and then Chris will give his um, nugget. So when you go up to your name and you go into settings, your marketing profile, as soon as you hit that, that green toggle switch, your website's created for you. And so is your app. You don't have to do anything. You can go in and change the look, the layout and stuff like that. But under connect settings and marketing profile, as long as this little guy is turned on, your web app is automatically sent to you. And what I'm going to tell you guys to do is send yourself the smart plans first. Make sure you're in your data bank as your personal email, because sometimes when you email yourself as yourself, systems think you are spam or phishing and doing something you're not supposed to. So you should be at 100% in your own data bank with your personal info. That's a different conversation. If you can't get yourself to 100%, I'll help you. But once that is toggled on, 
then you can come over to smart plans and if you don't know where you are hit the red kw it gives you the words from there there's two parts of smart plans one is your library of things you own or have created or downloaded and then the other is going to be the actual kw library only start with the ones kw provides do not make your own birthday ones they won't work do not make your own home anniversary ones they don't work so at the top you see mine and you see library if you scroll you'll see kw and there's 10 of them these 10 are perfect these 10 you can run your whole business and never add anything else up here you can also search by author so when we say we made you a smart plan or marty miller says grab my smart plan or chris says grab my smart plan you can just look us up by name and then all of a sudden you're going to see all the things we build for you and then you just click add smart plan they end up in your library and then you can put them from your app or from um the contact card the joe schmo contact card there's a there's a smart plan for everything don't have a phone number boom it sends an email don't have an email boom it tells you what to text like it's like, I don't know, how, I'm not trying to put us down, but when I say it's lead gen for dummies, it's lead gen for dummies. And if you need help with that, follow up with me after. Um, and if you guys email me at b.silva at kw.com and you put healthy contacts in the subject line, I'll give you my cheat sheet for healthy contacts and how to get them up to 100%. Thanks, Brooke. <laughs> no problem. All right, Chris, what's that nugget? We'll wrap okay. them up and we'll give them a so half hour. It's actually going to be two because I saw something on your command. So share your screen real quick and yes, go back sir. into Joe Schmo. Um, and I, I guarantee that you have not heard these two pieces, these two nuggets. Um, if you have, I will give you your money back. Um, <laughs> so if you look on his phone number, you'll see that there's a little green um phone icon now that's not a stock icon in command if you go into your command you will not see that there is a uh, google voice browser extension that brooke has i informed brooke about and she installed on her chrome um and what you can do is click on that and it will dial the number in google or in uh, google voice and what's great is this is essentially turning command into a dialer without turning command into a dialer. This makes it a way for us to avoid any of those you know, legal dialer issues. So that's an awesome value. If, um, if you use Google Voice, if you don't use Google Voice, it's totally free. Second, now go back again to command. Let's see, here it shows uh, Joe Schmo's a firefighter. And Joe Schmo lives in, I forget what address we had there. So um, let's say, there we go, Wilmington. So we know that Joe Schmo is a part of Wilmington the Fire Department. Now open a new tab and go to alerts.google.com. Um, I have a lot. Yep. So what you can do is type in Wilmington Fire Department. Oh. Now you can create that alert and now anytime an article about the Wilmington Fire Department pops up on Google, you will get an email about it. And that's free touches that you had no, you didn't have to do anything to, to find. Right, it'll come to your email, and then you can call Joe Schmo and said, "Oh, hey, I just saw this article about the fire department, or I just saw that you were acknowledged by the fire department for getting this award. Congratulations!" Right, you can do you know, Salem University. Anytime you hear something about you know that university, you can send that email out to um, all the parents that you have tagged as Salem State. I or love everyone. Google Alerts. I actually, yep. if you saw before, I had KW New England on there because I want to watch and see if anybody else is reporting stuff besides us. When agents hit the news or they're doing something greater, they get written up in local articles for doing cool things. I pull those in and then I reach out to our agents and say, congratulations on being featured in this magazine or this newspaper. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yep. And you can always put your name in there as well to see if anyone's, you know, running their mouth about you on the internet, but truth, truth. Mm -hmm. 
And David, so David asked me, what was the story? That was it, the divorce story where my husband was so freaked out that I went so negative. But guys, we deal in negativity because usually the biggest catalyst of people moving is something negative um, before it's mm -hmm. positive. It, death, you know, Laura called it her three Ds, but you know, death and divorce are usually the top two. Don't, don't shy away from those. Don't shy away from being the um, realtor of choice or the professional choice during hard things. Don't be an yep. ambulance chaser, yep. right? But there are ways to be the person in those worlds so that you are always the realtor of choice or person of choice when it comes to anything in the community, you become a community leader. All right, guys, that was a lot of info today. Mm -hmm. And we learned so, a lot of systems. Since it was a lot of info and a lot of systems, I want two or three people just to tell me one action step you're going to take based on what we've talked about today. And it's okay if, if you guys want to spend three hours sitting here and listening to us talk and not implement anything you've learned. The only person that's losing out is you and your business. And I've only got one email from someone with the healthy contacts. Google I'm Voice, cool. Chris, right now. What I'm was actually, that, Jason? I'm actually updating myself in the command app, but I'm putting myself on smart plan. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Guys, everybody yes. always says to me, what do they look like? Oh, how much you put yourself on them? I want to see. Neighborhood Nurtures. Emily, we talked about that last week. <laughs> right? Download your app and use it as a consumer. So that way you're not like, I don't know what to do or what, where you are either. Like. Be in control. Tagging. Mm -hmm. In you know, your office, gonna... if you need help setting up, Mary, you've got your leadership crew is there to help you. They've got videos. They'll do on sites with you. Check in with your your leadership. They do have people there in the market center that their job is to get you rock and rolling. I'm I'm going to start going to the a different bar every day for three hours. That's something I'm going to implement. My wallet might not like that. My wallet might not like that. Well, hey, it's South Florida. Tagging. You go to the right bar. I don't have to pay. Yeah. Um, tagging is huge. Tagging is huge. Yep. And little bites. Guys, everything we do, if we had set things up in the beginning and none of us do, that's why we teach this. You're not the first. You won't be the last small steps don't ever try to clean your database all at once you'll never do it just like kids don't clean their rooms all in one swoop without you being pestering them and telling them what to do next same mm -hmm. thing with us we need we need to just take small steps to do healthy things for our business every day because guys you own your own business you're in charge of this world we're going to help you and guide you but at the end of the day it's up to you guys jason my friend this is there a cheat sheet on how to set that little uh, icon in Google Alerts? Do you have something you can send us? Uh, email um, me, and I'll yeah. email Chris and I, and I'll find the uh, Google How to. You cannot use your KW email. You do have to have a personal Gmail for that, just so you know. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. But it is entirely free. I did a YouTube video on it a long time ago, but I need to re. I need to update it because it's probably a little different now. Chris, is your email out there? Did you? Put yeah, or seeing Chris at kw.com. I'll put it in the chat again. Thank you. And we owe you the talking to family script as well. Um, Chris and I are going to dig through our archives for that. Mm -hmm. I know I've got it. I just have to find it yeah. in all 30,000 script books I happen to have. It's funny because here in Florida, like everybody and their dogs are realtor. So it's we need to use the script on why not to use your family, use me instead of your family members. So that's why I'm so unfamiliar with that one. Awesome. Oh, Chris, Teresa, thank you so much. Chris, anytime I get to teach with you, it is an absolute oh, pleasure. I love so you much so fun. much. Now we just need to get me up to the New England area so we can do this yep. in person. Oh, There's just something about teaching you guys in person. That's why we ask you, that's one of the main reasons we ask you to, to put your cameras on. Because we're used to teaching the faces, not black boxes with your name typed in white. No, we should do we should do it like an ignite like power day instead of it like where we just review all of ignite in one day that's intense i'd rabbit trail for like two days so yeah i got you i'm, I'm a task master don't you worry <laughs> there is no i digress it's let's go let's go let's go mm -hmm. <laughs>
All right, friends, well, you know how to find us. If you need anything, brookthenerd.com. I put all kinds of fun things out on my Facebook, on my website for you guys, tools. You can find follow-up to any of the other classes we have. Um, Teresa, can you put the line up for the growth call in the Ignite Facebook group again? Don't forget, every Monday at 2 p.m., we give you your growth social media you need for the week. So if you have not been tapping in at 2 o'clock, do it. And then in the back half from 2.30 to 3, I actually go over the tech that matters in your business. Today we're covering email signatures and how to stay out of spam. Um, and, it, and here's the hint. You should be there if you have nothing but an image in your email signature. Just going to put that out there. I'm not judging. I'm just telling you. People already know who you are in your email. So let's worry about that for marketing. So if you don't know how to set up an email signature that's going to keep you out of spam, come play with me today at 2.30 and I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, friends, you take care. Chris, Teresa, you're the best. And we will see you guys either at the Growth Call Summer Shift or the next Ignite. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.